sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want right here toll free. At 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We have a special guest co-host tonight. She is Lauren, uh, also known as Objectivist Girl. She's from hailing from Manchester at this time. Um, first time in Keene, actually, as, uh, as we just discovered during the break. And we were kind of... I guess having her recount her story as far as like, well, where did you come from? How did you end up here in New Hampshire? You were telling us, Lauren, that you were kind of picked on in school and then you sort of found yourself. um, And ultimately, you ended up here. The Free State Project, of course, the best chance, in my opinion, to achieve liberty in your lifetime. If you care about freedom, if you want to have some semblance of it at some point in the future, then it just makes sense to get together with other people who think like you. Right. Because there aren't enough. I mean, sorry, there just aren't enough liberty-minded people uh, anywhere in the United States. No. So the idea is, well, let's take the stragglers, you know, the people who are frustrated, who want more freedom, the people who are willing to do something to achieve that freedom. And Because there's a lot of talkers in the liberty movement. There are a lot of people who their idea of activism is to post a Facebook update. Sorry, it's going to take more than that. Uh, so let's bring 20,000 of them all to the same place. 
Hence, the Free State Project New Hampshire was chosen. There are over 15,500 people who have currently signed up to move here. Over 1,500 have actually made, you know, are actually here. So you're one of the early movers, Lauren, and you moved in 2013? Yes, it did. Oh, no. Um, 2014? Yes, 2013. 2013. You're right. Um, so... I'm losing track of the years now. Um, no, I, I moved here in August, and okay. it's been amazing ever since. Like, If you haven't moved here, you need to, because it is so much fun. Well, for me, I, I think it is fun. And one of the things I think about the, the Free State Project is, is if you're not motivated to move, we don't want you. Um, sure. you know? Oh, <laughs> man, that's harsh. It's it's supposed to be harsh. <laughs> I mean, the fact is is that we are a vanguard of people that are bringing the ideas of liberty to New Hampshire. We, we are the ones that have to set up camp. And then once the camp's set up, a certain amount of other people will straggle in. And then once the fires are going and the stores are being told and the s'mores are being, then all the, you know, all the rest of them, the, the, the you know, they're, they're going to float in and want your s'mores and stuff yeah. that's fine i know that that's what we're here to do but um you've got to be dedicated to be here because if you're not dedicated you're going to come and you'll be like oh god this is i, I can't be away from mama and you're going to go <laughs> home and that it's happened, right? There have been people who've gone home. That's uh, it's, true. It, it, it's, oh, man. it's not great for the Free State Project. If somebody comes and then leaves, I'd rather them not come at all. Yeah, true. So what brought you here? Why New Hampshire? How did you encounter the Free State Project? And was it an immediate, yes, I have to do this? Or do you have to think about it for a little while? Um, actually, I went to a... Um, because of Ayn Rand, I went to the Atlas Summit. So shameless plug, guys, you should go to the Atlas Summit this summer. Um, it's June 19th through the 22nd in New Hampshire. So you can check out the Free State Project while you're Isn't here. Isn't that right before Pork Fest? Yes, it is. It's okay. right before Pork Fest. So stick around and hang out with us at Pork Fest. Why not come a little bit early? So anyway, I went to the Atlas Summit. Where was it when you went to it? Was um, it also it New was, No, it was in D.C. Okay. So this year I'm doing all the recruiting for it. So if you guys want to get a hold of me, I can help you guys obtain student scholarships if any of you are students uh, to come here completely free. So that's mm-hmm. awesome. Cool. Uh, and then you just stick around for Pork Fest. So anyway, um, I ended up going to the Atlas Summit and meeting a lot of the free staters like Carla Garricky. Carla got me excited about it because she is awesome. Oh, yeah. She's a really cool lady. <laughs> yeah, she's really cool. So um, I ended up moving here right afterwards because George Lambert offered me a, a social media job on his campaign. And I did that for a little while. Unfortunately, George fell ill and uh, we had to stop the campaign, which is unfortunate. But I stuck around afterwards because I fell in love with it. And I fell in love with the people here because they're amazing. So it was your experience just meeting Carla, who is the current president of the Free State Project. And she transferred whatever level of enthusiasm was necessary to get you jazzed up about this. Did you visit uh, New Hampshire before you moved or did you just move? No. No, I had never been to New Hampshire. I couldn't possibly predict how cold it would be here. <laughs> <laughs> but You're it's from okay. Indiana. <laughs> it's it's actually colder here. Really? Is it? It's yeah, it is. It's. It was a cold year, <laughs> well, but I think it was a cold year all over the, the country. I'm just surprised. I mean, I don't know whether you're talking about northern Indiana or southern Indiana here, but uh, as I understand it, it's on par with Chicago weather. Well, I'll tell you what. It's totally worth it because, as my friend Amanda Billy Rock put it so nicely, um, she said that even though it's cold here, the hearts of the free staters are so warm that it doesn't Totally matter. true. The community is unprecedented here. And I mean, let alone all the great activism. I mean, there's all kinds of fun activism, as you were kind of referencing oh, earlier. Oh, yeah, it's a blast. Um, but the community itself is just, you can't match it. It doesn't exist anywhere nope. else. There's no chance that it is going to exist anywhere else at any point in at least the foreseeable future. All the so, good activists have been sucked up with the Free State Project at this point. If, if you, they haven't yet, they're on their way. Yeah, if you want to, I mean, you might be able to set this up on the other side of the world or something. They try Tried that. Free State Europe didn't go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere. No. Um, we just sucked in Carlos Morales from Truth Over Comfort. <laughs> That's so, right. And yeah. he came from Asheville, which was uh, the site of the Blue Ridge Liberty Project. Yeah, he came with me so we can do a um, do our own live show. So. And he's great. Really we cool. had him on briefly uh, from the Liberty Forum. Carlos, uh, for those that were listening, you may recall he's the former uh, CPS, uh, Child Protective Services officer, who has since left that particular line of work and is now doing something productive. And uh, <laughs> it's wonderful. And he's really and he's really great. I, I'm looking forward to actually checking out his show. I haven't had a chance to do that. It's yet. amazing. You'll love it. He's got so much passion. 
That's great. So freestateproject.org, go and you can get signed up there. Join the over 15,500 people that have done as we have done. Well, the 15,000 haven't moved yet, but they've all signed the statement that has said that they will move once 20,000 is reached. We decided to move early. Mark and myself came back in 2006, and it's really been interesting. I mean, you just kind of came into it last year, but we've had the uh, the experience of watching it grow. You know, when I came here, it was half a dozen people living in the Keene area. Wow. It's now, you know, a couple dozen. And of course, you're living in Manchester where there's probably, I don't know, a couple hundred people. It mm-hmm. seems like it, at least. I really, it, it's hard to even keep tabs on it all because every, it seems like every week there's new movers coming in, at least in the Manchester area. That's the feeling that I get. And I'm on the outside. You know, I don't know if that's an exaggeration. Well, Certainly once a month. Well, Ian, you're once. trying to, you're trying to quantify these people, and that's incredibly difficult. You were at the the fair here in Cheshire County. That's right. Yeah. And you were doing running a booth for the Sh- uh, Shire Society, getting people to sign the Shire Subsi- Society uh, pledge or whatever it is that you've got there. Mm-hmm. And some people who moved for the Free State Project wandered by that you'd never met, that never did any kind of activism. They're well, 1, that we know of, right? I mean, they, they were a, it was a family, so maybe yeah. their kind of activism is different. Yeah, indeed. Okay, so uh, I should say that they weren't involved in the community. Like you have a choice. You move right, the, the Free State Project. Yeah. The Free State Project is what you want it to be. If you want to just pick up your life, move to New Hampshire, um, you know, uh, vote for the liberty-oriented candidates, write a letter to the editor now and then, yep. and that's your level of commitment to activism. That's fine. It's not like anybody's gonna well, you know, knock on your door and say you're not being active enough. Nope. <laughs> exactly. Whatever you want. So check it out at freestateproject.org. We'll come back with more here in moments. And, you know, Lauren, you sound like somebody who, just based on what you said so far, uh, that you're interested in self-improvement. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we've been kind of throughout the last couple weeks sprinkling in some of the 30 things to stop doing to yourself. Maybe we'll pick up on some of those here tonight. Oh, wow. I'm excited. Also, uh, you can dial in here toll free at 855-453. And Mark, I know you had this one because I had this as well. I saw it on your uh, post on the Facebook. Are we on the verge of Bitcoin mass adoption? It's Free Talk Live. If you own a business, you need customers, right? Well, your potential customers are listening to this radio program right now, and I can help you reach them. Hi, I'm Matt Brower, a national marketing executive at the radio network responsible for this program. I can help you customize a national radio campaign that fits your budget, large or small, while targeting your specific audience. Call me to learn how radio advertising can make your business more profitable. 877-996-4327, extension 128. That's 877-996-4327, extension 128. It's time to kick some ash because cigarettes have met their match. Smokers are switching to Vaporate e-liquid by La Cig because when you kick ash, you kick tar and smelly smoke too. La Cig smokes the competition with real people customer service, a seven-day satisfaction guarantee, and same-day fast free shipping. Become a vapor today at LaCig.com, spelled L-E-C-I-G.com. La Cig e-cigarettes, kick some ash. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. 
The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Pennington is reeling this hour from one of the biggest stories we've seen in decades. That's right, Kathy. Mayor Sue Hallinan has stepped down following revelations of her involvement in a coupon forging scandal. After a week of fervent denials, Mayor Hallinan admitted that last Thursday she used five counterfeit coupons on a weekly shopping trip to the Kroger for a savings totaling $14.81. Once you've made a fake coupon and you've had a taste of that power, it's hard to stop. Mayor Hallinan also apologized for her first response to the controversy when she blamed Jared the Paperboy for stealing her coupons and replacing them with the fakes. I don't know what to say. She could have ruined my career. I hope she goes to jail forever. And in what many are saying is the ultimate indignity, Mayor Hallinan's photo has been put up on the Kroger so-called banishment wall in between such undesirables as the Fredericks boy and infamous gum thief, Mr. Ivins. This is the Onion News Network. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want right here. Toll free number 855-453-FREE. That's 855 855- 450-3733 and of course join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. You just send a contact request, it will be approved and then it'll be easy for you to contact us via Skype from that point forward. Don't forget you can join us over at freetalklive.com and you the listener can create the content there on the front page of the website. In fact, everything that you see on the front page was created by listeners like you. Everything as you scroll down the numbered items, there are sometimes YouTube videos, sometimes news posts, blog posts, whatever it is that you find online that you think is worthy of sharing, uh, you submit it to our site and then other listeners can vote it up or down depending on whether they like or dislike. And you get to vote on things too over at freetalklive.com. Leader Amp, I just did an interview uh, just before the show started with uh, Dr. Matt Barney of the founder of Leader Amp. And what Leader Amp is, is, is it's a program to help you uh, you know, develop in the area of persuasive skills. So a lot of people use, you know, the, use their words to do their job, like I do. And persuasion, it, it can help you in all kinds of areas, whether you're in sales or uh, you're a speaking professional or, for instance, just working inside the office with other people. Lots of people can use these skills, and you can go to leaderamp.freetalklive.com and sign up for their program. Now, Leaderamp isn't you, most of this, most of these, uh, these get these self-help things have always been books or programs or speeches or seminars, things like that. Leader Amp's different. It is an app for your smartphone that you use and sort of interact with throughout the day, and then it gives you feedback and how you can grow and learn. It'll uh, put you on a little chart, show you where you can get better, where you can improve. It also matches you against other people in the little social network of, of Leader Amp. It also has uh, historical figures put on there so that you can see that nobody's perfect and we all have to work on these skills, and this will help you. It costs, a, it's 25 bucks. You go to the Indiegogo campaign at leaderamp.freetalklive.com. You sign up for the $25 tier, you will get what I signed up for, which is um, you know an evaluation. Now, obviously, they have to get they get get finished with the the app, and, and that's going to be coming um, in the near future. But 25 bucks, that's what a hardcover book costs. You can either buy some book that you probably won't even read, or you can have this app that you interact with. Leaderamp.freetalklive.com. All right, so our toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Mark, you actually did something that was uh, shocking to me today, and Lauren, uh, it'll be interesting to get your opinion on this. Uh, you pulled down a post that I made on the Free Talk Live Facebook page. I did. Now, dun, I was dun, dun. shocked at this for multiple reasons. I mean, generally, we like to post things on our page that we think our listeners might be interested in. Uh, you know, it sparks discussion, it sparks sharing, it sparks likes. You're really into this whole Facebook posting thing. And then all of a sudden, you pulled down a post that I made. What was that all about? So you um, apparently had, you, you go out on a regular basis and you go to the courthouse and you pass out your literature. Um, is this the don't take a plea deal literature? That's what I was doing this morning, yes. So this is a great deal of dedication you've had. I don't know how many years you've been doing this. 
I don't know either. A yeah. few. Yeah, a few years you've been going out. You've been passing out literature that shows people who are at the courthouse, um, hopefully most, mostly for victimless crimes. We just know from the numbers that it's mm-hmm. mostly victimless crimes. Um, that there's value in not taking the plea deal, and especially not taking the first plea deal. Now, um, and what you'll often do is your system is to open the door for people and hand them a piece of literature as they go by. Is that one of the, the it's pretty much recruiting it, yeah. techniques? Yeah. I stand out in front of the courthouse, and uh, I'm the only one there, and I hand out dozens and dozens of flyers whenever there's arraignments. Now, I believe you've reposted this post. Me and others. There are other activists that do it, too. Yep, that, that you do. There's more than one person that supports you in this, and I think that's great that you should be more than one person. Um and what uh, now? I believe you've reposted this. People can go to Facebook. I did. Free I talked live it right at the beginning of the show. Facebook. Freetalklive. Com and see it. I will, uh, you know, post in there what I think about it. But nonetheless, it's posted so people can see it. And um, some surly old guy comes through. And says, Don't hold the door for me, you oh, moron! I saw this. That's right. He calls you a moron. And and he said, "Don't hold the door for me, and don't talk to me, you moron." Don't hold the door for me, and don't talk to me, you moron. He sounds like a. Interesting a person, gentlemen. Yep. Uh, now, just a little background on this individual. I've seen him countless times at this courthouse before. I suspect he is an attorney because of that, but I don't know exactly what his role is. I don't know if he's a prosecutor, a defense attorney, or if he just works for the court in some manner as not an attorney. But he is a, a familiar face at the courthouse. Okay, and, and most bureaucrats, by the way, are friendly when they come in, even if they're the prosecutor or whatever. They appreciate the door being held for them. Uh, you know, have cordial conversations with uh, the, the state troopers that come through, etc. I, I hold the door for everybody. I don't discriminate uh, on who I hold the door for. Nope, but he said, don't hold the door for me and don't speak to me, you moron. <laughs> yep. And, and I, didn't, I hadn't said anything to him. That was a really good him, impression, Mark. Except for maybe I good morning. I have no clue, but it certainly sounds like a grumpy old guy, doesn't <laughs> it? I may have said good morning, and that would have been the only thing I would have said to <laughs> don't him. Don't say good morning to me, you moron. <laughs> um, so what, and, and then a couple, what, hour and a half later or something? No, half like an hour later. I'm only there for an hour. Half an hour later, he comes out, and you decide that uh, the best course of action that you can do after dealing with a grumpy, surly old uh, you know, guy that's, that frequents the courthouse mm-hmm. is that you can follow him to his car and take yeah. pictures of him. That's right. And <laughs> I wanted to know who he was. Well, that's, and, uh, and I, I so get I, it. But, so I needed to get a picture of him. And I think that, one, you've jumped to a conclusion is, is that he's an officer of the court. I think it's a reasonable conclusion, but that doesn't make it right. If I didn't he's, say I was right. If he's an officer of the court, then I think that you have a little you more standing. You know lawyers standing. are officers of the court, right? That's what I mean. Okay. Yes. An officer, he is a lawyer, or yep. like an officer of the court. And so, therefore, he's more of a public figure. He's especially responsible for the court building. If you're an officer of the court, you should be making people feel welcome at the courthouse. You'd think so. In my opinion. And um, so there are plenty of courts where that doesn't happen, but he, he represents the court in some way. However, he may just be a concerned citizen that shows up at a lot of court. He things. might be. It's unlikely, but it's possible. Mm-hmm. And if you followed a concerned citizen back to their car and began taking pictures of yeah. them, in my opinion, you have maybe not from the legal sense, but from an ethical and moral sense, harass that person. They, I'm sorry. Taking a picture of somebody is not harassment. They no, you, not at all. Not even by the legal definition is that harassment. Just because a person bugs you, and it wasn't like I just followed some random person back to their car. It was a person who called you a moron. I followed a very <laughs> rude man, <laughs> and I think that people who behave uh, poorly like that in public, that there's nothing wrong with bringing attention to their behavior. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I just shine light on people. What like you that. need to do is you need to have the highest ground. You're an activist. You mm-hmm. need to have the highest ground at all the times that you can claim it for yourself because there's going to be times when you can't claim it. And here, you don't have it. You just don't have the highest ground. Mm. So that's my opinion on this. Because I took his picture, I'm on low ground. Yeah, I don't Ridiculous. think you should have hassled this guy. He was technically in a public place. So totally public. Technically, sure, Ian had a ch- right to. But here's my ruling from the court of, of Free Talk Live. <laughs> I'm the judge now. All right. So judge you, you have girl. every right to take a photo of him. I see your motives. I don't think that they were bad motives motives but on the other hand i see mark's point of view it's kind of a little bit petty i mean you think so yeah a little bit why should he think, be allowed to get away with what he did activism but your activism that's just it like people are going to try and bring you down when you're doing your activism but it makes you a better person to just ignore them because i mean this is one of the things i was somebody made a post today that that this makes me think of and it's when someone um, 
picks on you or is mean to you, it's because um, because they don't like themselves sure. and you're a reflection of what they'd like to be. And so um, maybe he's just angry with his life and wishes he could be doing what you're doing. So certainly possible, you know, maybe like reach out to him and be like, so what is well, he already I told mean, me not to talk to him? <laughs> well, yeah, but sometimes, sometimes we have to. Then I would be violating so, his request at that point. Well, it's OK. I mean, you can violate people's requests. You just can't physically, you know, assault them. <laughs> it's fine. You can still talk to people that don't want to be talked to. So you're advocating that I do what he asked me not to do. <laughs> and that would be taking the high road. I think so. Yeah. That's, uh, that's see, my that opinion seems, on that this. Seems, I mean, I think seems education... Seems kind of iffy to me. Well, I think education is always beneficial. Well, we're halfway through the story. In this case, the education I want to do is to educate the public on who the jerk is that walked into the courthouse because they might have to deal with this guy in the future. So for me, the, the greater good, if you will, is to show people who this character is, ideally find out who he is. Ultimately, I will find out who he is and what it is that he does, and I predict it will be that he's an attorney. Eight 55, 450 free. There's a, half the story remaining. Though, Greater up. good. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is. And it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything with free shipping. What can you find at bitcoingeneralstore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. You gotta see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the no-no, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible no-no hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. 
ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, we'll take your calls about whatever you would like to discuss. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and you can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Uh, with you in the studio tonight, it is Ian. And we have Lauren. 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 Oh, okay, sorry, I'm Lauren. sorry. I was supposed to announce myself. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. Haven't given her that coaching. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that I wasn't I was the, the hand princess motion would do it, but that yep. was being introduced each time. Indeed. <laughs> no, I wasn't special anymore. <laughs> no princesses on this show. <laughs> an Except anti-princess for Ian. policy. Oh, zing. Zing. I'm telling you, Ian, you're not getting away with that last comment. We'll get into it, I promise. <laughs> but first, uh, to tell you about... Did you say who you were, Mark? Uh, and Mark. Okay, good. Uh, ProXPN, you can go there to proxpn.com slash FTL, and you can grab their app. There's one for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android. Linux users, there's a setup process, uh, but you can do ProXPN as well. Why would you want to do ProXPN? What is it? It's a global virtual private network. Private, meaning encrypted, meaning that everything that you do online is encrypted before it reaches your internet service provider. So your ISP will no longer know what you're doing. They'll no longer know which websites you're visiting. They'll no longer know what uh, search terms you're entering. Right now, they're probably logging that information and keeping those logs in some cases for up to five years. So you can stop that right now by going to proxpn.com slash FTL, grabbing the app, getting started with ProXPN. There is a free account, so you can just jump right in and give it a try and see how this works. So again, they protect you from your ISP snooping on you, which also means that you'd be protected if you're at like a coffee shop from the system administrator snooping on you or somebody trying to if your Wi-Fi packets, maybe steal a credit card info or bank account login information, you are protected from that by ProXPN. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go get, uh, get the software there. And when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth, use our discount code FTL20. That's FTL and the number 20. And that gets you 20% off uh, the price for the lifetime of the account. So that's a pretty great discount. It actually breaks the price down to $5 per month if you get the annual plan. So it's a great deal, great privacy protections. Plus, with the premium account, you can select which uh, server you want to connect to around the world. And you can do private torrenting. Now, word of note, uh, if you are going to do private torrenting, I recommend the Netherlands server that they have. The Netherlands has the greatest privacy protections, far greater than any of the U.S. servers. And they have other servers like Singapore. Uh, there's another one in Prague and I think another one in London. But Netherlands by far the best if you're going to do private torrenting. And again, go to proxpn.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Our code for the discount, 20% off, is FTL20. And if you pay with Bitcoin for the annual plan, you'll save even more. By the way, ProXPN does not keep records of your online surfing habits. So proxpn.com slash FTL. We were talking about what happened to me this morning as I was out in front of the courthouse handing out don't take a plea deal information to the the poor victims of the just so-called justice system who were coming into court that day. There's one guy who I've seen a bunch of times. I suspect he's an attorney. I could be wrong about that. Um, I will find out soon enough. But this guy, as I'm opening the door for him, as I do for everybody that walks in, I probably said good morning to him. Not all the door for he me. Says, and don't talk to me, you moron. Yeah. And so I said, well, that's not very nice as he walks inside. And he mumbled something else as he was he was going in. I couldn't make out what that was. Why would was. I be nice Mark, to you? Mark, You're a moron. Mark, you did the best impressions. I swear to you. <laughs> so the rest of the story is that a half hour later, he comes out. I've decided at this point that I was going to go in and take a picture of him in the courthouse, but he did me the favor and came out. For the greater so, good, right? Uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I, he walks to his car, which is parked literally right in front of the courthouse. And so I waited till he got to his car. I got my uh, my cell phone out. I got into the camera mode. I walked up, and he's he's like putting his jacket in the back seat. So he's still outside of his car. Snap a picture of him, and he makes some statement about anarchy. 
and I'm not an anarchist, but I didn't bother telling him that. I didn't, I didn't in fact, respond to him at all. Because he asked you not to talk to him. Well, I just didn't respond to him, <laughs> not because he asked me to. But, uh, but anyway, he's, he make, makes some statement about uh, anarchy, and then as I'm walking away and he's getting into his car, he says something else about how if I see that picture show up anywhere online, I'm going to sue you for defamation. And so at that point, at, th- at that point, I uh, decided that I'm now going to blog about him because previously, all I wanted to do originally was just get a picture of him to show to some of my activist friends like, hey, do you know who this guy is? It would have been a private thing like, you know, who is this character? Um, but as soon as he threatened me with a defamation lawsuit, if I put the picture online, that's when I decided I'm going to put the picture online. I've heard about so. you, Keniacs. This doesn't sound that uh, off from what I've been hearing. Yeah. So is it still petty, <laughs> or did it now go to a level of, hmm, maybe you should be putting that online at that point? No, you're, no. you're playing chicken with this guy. And, um, yeah, I mean, you're trying to call him out and see if he's that's right, I'm he's calling trying to his call bluff. his bluff. No, mm-hmm. no, 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 but that's, not, that's, that's counterproductive to what you're trying to do. You want to be trying to motivate a public to liberty. I mean, what what's in this for you? I mean, what's in it for any liberty person that just messing with this one guy? This is never going to do anything. Right. It's too focus it, on liberty. It's two uh, bull moose that meet each other on the plane mm-hmm. and decide who who's <laughs> going to see who has bigger antlers here. <laughs> oh yeah, you said my antlers weren't as big as your antlers. Let me show you so how what, my antlers. So you're work. making the <laughs> argument that the uh, the threatening aggressive man should just be he let wasn't to get aggressive. away. He threatened a lawsuit. That's an aggression. No, he uh, did not if, threaten a lawsuit yes, until you had taken. In the picture. No, he he threatened retaliatory force. You all this taking was, a picture isn't force. All this was uh, an escalation. No, no, no. Of violence. If, if you if you went after him further, he was going to retaliate. If, if he considered you putting him his picture online and putting defaming language with it, what he said mm. with it, which is probably what he was assuming is you would say what he said. Yeah. And he was threatening retaliatory force because you would be compromising his character. Well, he compromised his character by uh, revealing it, it depends. to the world. You need to find out if you don't want to get in trouble for this. You should find out if he's a public figure. Oh, I'm not worried. Technically, but if he's a public anybody figure, on the street, I can take a picture of I know, anybody I want on the keen. street, and uh, and I don't take pictures of the average person on the street because they're not interesting. You don't interesting. know that for certain at this point. Um, uh, they're not interesting, <laughs> but this guy was interesting, and the conflict is interesting. And if this guy, as long as you are clear that this is a conflict and that you aren't necessarily in the right and he isn't necessarily in the wrong, this is simply an escalation of force. This guy has every right not to have the door posting held for a you. blog is not force. That's okay. shining I'm light sorry. on a an, scumbag an es- in this case. An escalation of jackassery, okay? It's so what we have character. here is a guy who called you names like a jackass, mm-hmm. yep. and you who responded, you know, well, you decided, uh, well, I'm going to think about this for a minute, and you had an entire half an hour to respond, and you decided, I will take the jackass route, and you follow him That's to his right. car. Taking a picture as being a jackass. And calling uh-huh. somebody a moron as it being a jackass. Um, and so you go to his car, you snap a picture of him, he says, you're going to put that picture on the internet, or I'm going to get you. And you say, mm-hmm. oh yeah, well, I'll put it on the internet then. Yep. You know, and Come you know, and get me. If he comes to the door, then you're going to do it again. I mean, you're not going to be back down. Oh yeah, next time I see him, I'm going to record video of him. You and Derek J would get along very well. Adrenal- I bet you did. You are yes, an adrenaline did. junkie, and this guy simply fed your addiction. <laughs> yeah, you guys are really into this adrenaline thing uh, in Keene. I've, I've, I've heard lots See, about it here. Well, I've seen Derek J's videos. It's a big awesome. town. You're both arguing to let this guy get away with what he did. I he say, take anything. the higher he ground. He just got upset with you. I mean, you didn't really. It's not like he committed some heinous crime against the Liberty community. He just told you to go F off. That's it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm. <laughs> I think people need to know who people are that misbehave, and that way, people that misbehave know they can't get away with that stuff. If Do I people... put online every time somebody told me to f off, people would never listen to me ever again. Yeah, but how many people tell you that to your face? A lot. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm an I don't have that experience. I'm an objectivist. People uh, immediately object. Let's go to the phones. Eric's in Kansas. You're on Free Talk Live. Eric, you're on uh, on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Ian. Um... On this situation, you're not wrong, but I, I think I think everybody's just trying to tell you there 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 may be a better way to go about it. Like what? Um, well, you say this guy is a, is a frequenter of the courthouse, right? Yes. So it's not like you're not going to see him again, right? I'm definitely going to see him again, and I'll have my video camera okay. ready. Well, 
well, now, next time you have your video camera ready and you open the door for him, you know, then... then that's oh, he asked me not to open the door for him, so I won't open the door for him. Well, uh, well, at any rate, you're, you're going to have instances of him running across you at the courthouse again when, mm-hmm. when you do have a camera. And and that would probably be better better activist filming than 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 posting, you know, you, you following him to his car or something. Uh, I'm not saying that's, that it was wrong to do that, but some people see that as aggression. Just, just sure. I mean, some people out. think taking a picture of someone is uh, is aggression. It's ridiculous. I exactly. think I'm going to steal exactly. their soul exactly. or it's something like that. Right. It's a, it's a gray area. It's totally subjective. And, and like I say, you're well, not in the wrong. I think everybody loves your activism. That's, that's, I don't well, think that's certainly not true. I don't think it's aggress- <laughs> aggression to run down the pic- run down the street taking pictures of the same person over and over again. It's just a jerk move. I didn't run down the no, street. No, I didn't say I you did. I walked up to his car and I took his picture. I agree. I concur. He's mm-hmm. setting up a case scenario. That's how you did. Eric, thanks for your call. I appreciate the thoughts. We'll continue here in hour number two. We'll talk about the greater, uh, greater yeah. good as well. It's free talk live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, April 3rd, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.83 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,283 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $437. Ballot Access News reports on April 2nd, the U.S. Supreme Court issued their opinion in McCutcheon v. Federal Elections Commission. The vote was 5-4 to four and struck down a federal law passed in 1976 that restricts how much money a donor may contribute in total to all candidates or committees. The decision does not affect the contribution limit from an individual to a particular candidate, which is $2,600 in the primary season and another $2,600 during the general election. The majority decision notes that among the 38 states that have contribution limits, only eight have aggregate limits. Justice Clarence Thomas wrote separately to say that he believes all contribution limits should be struck down. The majority opinion by Chief Justice John Roberts is 40 pages long. The dissenting opinion by Justice Stephen Breyer is 30 pages and also has an appendix of 13 pages with statistical data meant to show that the decision will make it easier for wealthy individuals to channel additional contributions to particular candidates. 
SCOTUS blog adds, the ruling emphasized that donors will get into legal trouble only if they demand a specific favor in policy or legislation in a direct exchange for the money they give. When you purchase gold or silver from Amagi Metals using my affiliate link, gold.fppradio.com, you help fund FPP Radio News. That's gold.fppradio.com. AFP reports, Ukraine's parliament on Tuesday approved a series of joint military exercises with NATO countries that would put U.S. troops in direct proximity to Russian forces. The decision came as NATO foreign ministers gathered in Brussels for a two-day meeting dominated by concerns over the reports of a recent buildup of Russian forces near Crimea that U.S. officials estimate had at one point reached 40,000 troops. NATO has sought to reinforce its eastern frontier after Russia's annexation of Crimea and amid concerns about Kremlin's emboldened foreign policy. The exercises approved Tuesday would see Ukraine conduct two sets of military exercises with the United States this summer that have prompted disquiet in Russia in previous years. Ukraine is planning two additional maneuvers with NATO member Poland as well as joint ground operations with Moldova and Romania. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numeri supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot F-P-P-Radio dot com. Reason.com reports many brewers have developed a relationship with farmers who feed spent grains to cows and other livestock. It's a win-win. Farmers get cost-effective feed, while brewers cut down on environmental waste and possibly make some extra cash, or at least save cash by not having to dispose of the spent grain. Under new rules proposed by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, breweries would be required to dry and package spent grain before it could be given or sold to farmers to use as feed. Both brewers and farmers are upset by this proposal, which they say would pose a big financial burden and also just generally makes no sense. According to craftbeer.com, spent grain accounts for as much as 85% of a brewery's total byproduct. But processing the spent grain would require additional equipment investments and additional labor. If the FDA has its way, brewers are likely to back out of their once symbiotic relationship with farmers or at least stop giving away spent grain for free, thereby raising farmers' operational cost. Or they'll see their own cost go up, whether they choose to process the feed for farmers the FDA's way or simply dispose of it, which still costs more than giving it away for free to livestock farmers. Either way, nobody wins under this new proposal. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shortly after having sexual intercourse with a prostitute earlier this afternoon, local man Jacob Reynolds told reporters that he never expected the experience would bring him to new heights of emotional and spiritual fulfillment. I was convinced that having sex with a complete stranger behind my wife's back would leave me feeling drained and empty on the inside, but... My self-esteem is through the roof. Reynolds, who said he paid $150 for a 30-minute block of time, said that his moderate expectations for the encounter were instantly surpassed by what turned out to be a deeply personal sexual communion that transported him to a new plane of emotional intimacy. I've never felt a stronger sense of spiritual connection. When our bodies met, there was an immediate sense of familiarity and comfort that just washed over me. I think it was the most meaningful experience of my life. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. You can dial in toll-free. At 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. Uh, we also have Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm, so feel free 
to contact us that way if you have the ability. If you don't yet have the ability, you've got a smartphone, just install the Skype app on there and then add LRN.FM to your contacts list. And then it upgrades the audio quality of your connection to us, which means you're more uh, pleasant and pleasurable to listen to, which means might want to keep you on longer. Possibly, if you're interesting. Uh, So call in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Tonight in the studio, it is Ian with you. Lauren. And Mark. Lauren's here from ObjectivistGirl.com, and I'm sure we're going to learn more about her over time as we may be having her back Maybe in the next month. I'm not we sure. have an objectively good time on on my YouTube channel, so you should check it out. You should. Objectively, we have a good time. Now, uh, so what we've been—if you're just tuning in—what we've been talking about is a situation that happened this morning. Uh, as I was out in front of the local courthouse here in Cheshire County, New Hampshire, handing out "Don't Take a Plea Deal" flyers to the people that are there, most of them for victimless crimes, trying to encourage them to at least know their rights and maybe exercise their right not to take the plea deal and go to trial, clog the court system, in the hopes that if enough people do that, then maybe we'll see the prosecution no longer go after people for piddly nonsense. Um, so in that process, I'm opening the door for people as they're coming into court. And one man who I've seen a bunch of times, I don't know who he is. I suspect he's an attorney, though. One man tells me, don't open the door for me and don't talk to me, you moron. I tell him that he's not very, very nice as he walks into the building. And, uh, and then I, uh, when he came out of the building, snapped his picture while he was getting in his car. He then proceeds to tell me that if he sees that photo online, he'll sue me for defamation. And so I, at that point, decided that I was going to post his photo online at freekeen.com on a blog titled, Angry, Rude Man Threatens Lawsuit Over Photos, uh, because photography is not a crime, and it's not illegal to take pictures of people. Now, it may be unpopular in certain circumstances to take pictures of people, and that's one of the reasons why you know I don't feel any interest in taking a picture of a family in the park. That's not interesting. I'm not doing. That's not what I'm out there to do. But if there's somebody who's behaving poorly, and I want people to know about that, then this is how I do it. In fact, I uh, I didn't bring my video camera out in this case because really my only intention in taking the picture was I just wanted to capture this person on you know I wanted to capture his image so I could show it around and find out. Hey, you know. Have you ever dealt with this guy? Ask my activist friends here in the area, who is this character? Well, then when he threatened me with the lawsuit, that's when I decided that this was going to go further than just being shown around privately to friends, that I was going to ask everybody in, you know, who visits freekeen.com if they happen to know who this person is. Uh, Lauren, you said this was petty. Mark, you said this was jackassery. And we're going to go to Liberty Phoenix. He's on the line in Illinois via Skype. Phoenix, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Ian. Hey. Uh, I kind of have to take their side with that. Um, I don't know how many times you've told me, you know, you have to have a thick skin to be an, uh, an activist and to be able to, to stand up to the, to the slings and arrows of the hypocrisy that these people are going to throw at us. And it seems to me like you kind of followed him when he came out looking to, for a confrontation. So that means I don't have a thick skin because I wanted to show people who he is? Well, you had also said before that how how could you just let him get away with this? I mean, it's you know it's his opinion. He doesn't want it to be done with. I mean, if he's if he's that ignorant of an individual that he would simply assume that you're a moron, well, that's his own shortcomings. Hmm. I suspect he uh, he knows who I am. I mean, again, we've seen each other countless times at the at the courthouse. It's not like I'm an unknown quantity. Uh, around there. So he made specific comments that he believed were were targeted towards me. And I get what you're saying, you know, let it slide, it's no big deal, it's just somebody being a jerk. And uh, and I understand that, but I felt like this was not just your average jerk. Like if this was just some tool bag who uh, was walking down the street and said something mean, then that would have been no big deal. But this character is around a lot, and I suspect he works uh, either for the state or as a as an attorney. And if he works as an attorney, then he is an officer of the court, and he should not be insulting people out in front of the courthouse. Now, that is an assumption on my part. It is based on some level of observation of this individual. So, so if this it was isn't I don't the think same he's insulting as- people. I think he's insulting you. And, I mean, l- let's be honest, Ian. You're upset with this guy for doing <laughs> Say he was insulting people. You. I'm I'm sorry. No, did I you, say that? Yeah, you did. But um, I I think that you're upset over what he said, and I don't think this is for like the greater good. I think you were just upset, and like this guy got under your skin, and I can understand that. But like, 
it's kind of like painting it as if you're doing something for the public when I think you're just, you're upset and you want to see this guy get in trouble for what he did to you. Well, he's not going to get in trouble for it. I mean, he hasn't done anything. Well, you're doing whatever you can do. I mean, there was a high road and a low road here. And I don't think you found the high road. And the high, you're not saving anybody from anything. Um, oh my God, somebody else might get called a moron by a grumpy old dude. Ultimately, I just want to know who he is. If, That's what it, you want. Yeah. If right? we're like you're supposed, a, you got a vendetta. If we're supposed to be proponents of freedom of speech, how can we honestly stand here and say that we should disrespect somebody's freedom of speech? I mean, we wouldn't. I have the freedom of speech to put him on a blog. They don't like it. So more speech is all I did here. And you're saying my speech he, is bad. He gave his opinion of you as mm-hmm. as as stupid as his opinion was because and you're I a great guy. Photons Ian, of him. But <laughs> photons. Um and um he gave his opinion of you. He has a right to his opinion. Sure. And if we're to be proponents of freedom of speech and freedom of thought, then um then we, we shouldn't go after somebody for what they think. I mean, if they're aggressively Should, uh, acting against the public mm-hmm. and that actually restricts other people's freedom, then I see it. But in this case, he's not doing anything to aggress it, aggress against the public in any way, or even you. Um, it's just his thoughts. So and if, he's just uh, if so the, the Robin Hooders, for instance, the people that go on the streets in Keene and mm-hmm. fill meters, expired meters, and, and save people from getting parking tickets, they've had several interactions with some very, very rude people uh, on the streets who have had certain mm-hmm. things to say about them and the Robin Hooding process and all that. Should the Robin Hooders have not posted any of those videos the Robin because are running their vid- people? The Robin Hooders are running their video all the time. Mm-hmm. And not you, always. You missed your opportunity with this guy. Now, if you would got the video of him saying, don't hold the door for me and don't talk to me, you moron, then that's good video. That would have been fine with that you? That would have been fine. The problem yeah. is, is you can't stand there with a camera filming everybody who goes in. He has right. checkmated you. And that's what's got you so angry. There's an old Do I look grumpy, angry? Yes. You acted angry. You know, you have a Real, if you, I was angry, great, I would have said angry things at him. You have I just a took great picture. You have a great skill, Ian, of keeping your voice at a level when you're mm-hmm. angry. You've learned over time that the well, at least you've you've told yourself that the person who raises their like voice loses. True. Well, yeah. I'm sorry if you keep your you voice steady. You usually sound like a loser you when you're like, yelling. Well, that's that's what you say. <laughs> if you keep your voice steady and you act like a jerk, you're still a jerk with a steady voice. Uh-huh. That's all. It, Ian, to, to defend your position, though, since there is some level of familiarity between the two of you, considering he'd be, he feels familiar enough to insult you as such and you feel familiar enough with him to follow him to his car, I would love to see you two in a debate. And actually get or or an interview with him because that yeah feel free to come here and invite him to a debate with me awesome. that'd be great I'd love to see that kind of thing but but I'm <laughs> gonna say it'd be heated it'd be awesome Liberty Phoenix they don't have any desire to do that they don't want from what I've you know I'm gonna be go ahead and um you know make blanket statements here but generally these people the ones that uh, want to lob insults and that kind of thing they they don't have any desire to engage in a conversation because they hold the upper hand why would they? Well, because intelligent debate always progresses an issue. Yep, sorry. Not, they're if, they're if not he interested has, in progressing our issues. Well, if, he, if they have, well, they want to progress it to whichever direction they want. And what better opportunity could they have to progress it in a direction anti-free state project than to actually win a debate against a free stater? Why would you put it online if you lost? I mean, well, you're asking Ian to put online his debate with you. For one, I don't think debates solve anything, and they only continue to uh, cement people in their positions further. Um, and then, but nobody, I mean, they just don't yeah. want discussion. He, he said he doesn't want discussion. The first thing he said was, don't tell the door for me and don't talk to me, you moron. Plus, he doesn't He's, sound like a very interesting person in the first place. I don't, I don't ever want to talk to this guy. I just avoid him. Well, now you know what he looks like because I've taken his picture. Swell. 855 450 <laughs> free. Nice. Thanks, Phoenix. Appreciate it. 855 450 free. That is the toll free number here, and you may take control of the airwaves here in moments. Uh, share your thoughts. It can be on this or anything that happens to be on your mind, and we still have to talk about the greater good. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll get to that. I won't forget it. This is Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at BitcoinGeneralStore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? 
Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical Bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. You gotta see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, take control. Here toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And Skype in at username LRN.FM. Tonight in the studio, it's Ian here. And Lauren Rumpler. And Mark. And, of course, your calls are welcome. Also, you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. Do you have a smartphone? Would you like quick access to our live streams and now the webcam? You can go to m, as in mobile.freetalklive.com. Plus, there's a link to the podcast there as well for your convenience. m, like mobile.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee. You can go get a free pound of Buzzbox at coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox is high-end, organic, shade-grown uh, top 1% Arabica coffee. It's delicious. I drink it every day, and I think it's wonderful. I've Now that I've d- found good coffee, I don't want to drink the ordinary stuff from the store. 
But what's different about BuzzBox is that they, um, for you know, every one of the, let's see, every 10 customers that Free Talk Live gets, we're able to fund a microloan that goes to help people in foreign countries. So not only are you getting great coffee, but at the same time, you're giving people around the world a hand up. And that's what works. Handouts, I don't really think so. I don't think that, uh, that people, they, they don't have the same value for it as, as for something that they've worked for and paid back. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com, get a free pound, try it out, see if you like it. And if you do, stay on their coffee subscription that, uh, that you've signed up for there and enjoy the best of the best coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, let's go and continue with your phone call. Still to come, we have to talk to Lauren about the greater good. I used that phrase earlier, and it riled her up. It's uh, We'll find out more about it's that. Ed. But first, Johnson is on the line in New Hampshire, I believe, calling from Keene. Johnson, you're on Free Talk Live. Do we have Johnson? Johnson going once. Johnson going twice. Put him back on hold, and we will try instead. Wit in Arizona. Wit, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Lauren, and Mark. Do we have wit? Wit going once. Maybe there's some technical difficulty. Hi, Ian. There is wit. Okay. Hi. Woo. Um, whew, no kidding. Speaking of defamation, uh, Mark, this bud's for you. What's Who that? said on Free Talk Live, and I quote, they're all aggressors. All Muslims want you dead. Sounds this like you. ridiculous collectivization That's a of quote Muslims from you, right, Wit? Murders no, I'm quoting Ian. Is your last name Freeman? Freeman asks, and I, by the way, Ian, I asked I would Mark, never have said anything like that about correctly. Muslims, so I'm sorry you're wrong about no, that. No, you said that in response to my call after you had already dumped me. And speaking of defamation, you call me a bigot as well, and Mark said that's transparent. Really? It's funny because... I had never used the word Muslim ever on your show up until that point. Right. That You're I got calling in about the same Ian things Freeman. over and over again. No, Do you have anything I'm, new I'm, to talk you, about? You call me a... Speaking of defamation, you call me a bigot and said that I said all Muslims are murderers and this collectivist ridiculous stuff. I'm quoting you, Ian, about what I never said, never would say, mm-hmm. and okay, don't great. believe. You've corrected this but once you, previously, you with comfort in believing those things. May I speak here? You take comfort in things, believing things about your, your honest uh, interlocutor, that being wit, because like I tell my uh, liberal so-called open-minded friends, all men are prejudiced, and you affirm it going away style, Ian. I never, ever have bashed Muslims. That's fine, like Whit. You've said. certainly I called in, and you've sounded word. very anti-Islamic and yep. also anti-Japanese and very unfriendly a as well. I'm anti-Islamist. Right. So there difference. you go. Now we've got it straight. Yeah, you're, you're bigoted against those who follow the religion of Islam. That, that isn't that isn't a Muslim. Yeah, right. I don't have anything against the religion Wait, of Muslim. How many more times uh, are you going to call and make the same point over and over again? When are you going to say I'm sorry for branding you a bigot, Ian? Wait. When are you going to actually say I'm sorry? Say you're sorry, Ian. Don't feel like it. I'm not sorry to you, Wit. You're very rude. You're you're very rude. You You are constantly interrupting people. And really, I'm not sorry for dropping your phone call either. Goodbye. 855 450 free. You want to keep calling about the same thing? It's getting tiresome. I mean, he's, he's basically turning into Dave from New York, calling in over and over again. Call about something different for once. Make your call interesting. Make us want to put you on the air. 855-450 855-450 freeze the toll-free number here tonight. There you go. It's the second time, at least, that I've counted that he's corrected that. Like, he's not against Muslims. He's only against Islam, which, okay. No, Islamist is the term that uh, that they've decided to to uh, use on people that, uh, you know, that, that use violence or whatever in the name of Allah. So, I mean, I think it's a pretty safe place to go, but the problem is, is that if you prosecute a war against these people, that you have a tendency to drop bombs on people who aren't Islamists. And we know that because some of those people are below the age of, say, 12. And when you drop bombs on them, it looks really bad. There's been uh, like 200 kids killed uh, by drone strikes alone, and we're reasonably certain that these people probably weren't, uh, that those 12-year-olds and under weren't waging war on the United States. So that's one of the problems with this uh, hiding behind this whole Islamist thing. 
This is the problem with wars in general. Yeah. Innocent people end up dying. There's got to be better ways to solve this. It's a really terrible way to solve a why problem, isn't it? Why do people not have the ability to communicate? And that's why I encourage people to watch Objectivist Girl. Because uh, Objectivist Girl helps you be a more rational human being that's better able to communicate your ideas in a rational setting. It creates more rational people, which means that people will be able to communicate peacefully between one another because peace is so important. Which I generally uh, support. I'm a peace-oriented person, although some are saying that what I did today was not peace-oriented by taking a picture of somebody who... Uh, and, and by the way, would it change your opinion, guys? Uh, you know, uh, well, well, don't, if, don't, do, do not create the straw man that I'm saying that this isn't peace-oriented no, and I, then go and ask me a question. I would never say it was nothing if, about I'm if, only uh, saying it's, it's small I'm saying some and, you didn't, take the, and you didn't take the high road. Uh, would would it change your opinion if you knew for a fact this guy worked for the court and or as an attorney? Um, the wouldn't. guy I took a picture of today. It wouldn't because you just look bad. You just, I mean, it's, it's Ian, you didn't do anything wrong. You look bad. You went and chased after this guy after, you know. I walked. All, I don't think all, this is in your rational self-interest. Being an objectivist, I, I sure have it is. to say. I get I have uh, to website put my... views and I've spent an hour of time <laughs> talking about it on Free Talk Live. But, but, I mean, there's a difference between good publicity and bad publicity. That's just it. You need to Maybe. look for your own rational self-interest. I think all publicity is good publicity. We, all my, have, we only have one name and one reputation. In name. my opinion, you look no better than this guy, which mm -hmm. is to say you are a old grumpy jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Except for you're a young grumpy jerk, Let's, which is almost worse. Well, so. you are going to live longer, which actually does quantifiably make him worse, right? Know, because right? the old grumpy jerk will be dead and gone, and we won't have to deal with him in 20 years. Ian, still exactly. around. All right, let's go to Johnson. I think he's back. We had some, I think... Technical difficulties before. We're going to try one more time. Johnson, are you with us? Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, sir. Okay, fantastic. So, you know, I heard the claim made earlier that this guy didn't make any threats or any, you know, there was not anything that he was doing that was aggressive towards you. And see, from the blog post there on Free Keen that I read, it uh, it certainly seemed that he said that if you weren't compliant with his wishes, that he would send, use a system uh, involving a squadron of men to come and kill you if you weren't compliant. Well, um, you're talking about the defamation suit. Okay, so well, the I point, the point, the, the counterpoint to I that, Johnson, is that you. I took his picture before he made the threat about the ah, defamation. Ah, but you didn't suit. post it online until after he made the threat. And that anybody is... who makes that kind of a threat deserves to have their bluffs called. I totally agree. Stand by, Johnson. If you want to uh, comment okay. further, we'll bring you back here in a moment. But then again, some people would argue that Johnson's a jerk as well. Eight fifty-five, <laughs> four fifty, free. And he's in my corner on this one, which, you know, I'm happy to have the help. 855-450 free. Go get him, Rocky. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. Woo! That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. 
Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, bring up anything here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. We have been, for the most most portion of the show, been talking about this character who has been in and around the local courthouse here for as long as I can remember. I don't know what his role is, but uh, I am now very interested in finding out because he was very, very rude earlier today, and I snapped his photo in the hopes of being able to identify who he is. Um, After I snapped his photo, he threatened me with a lawsuit for defamation if I were to post that photo anywhere, so I have now posted it to the front page of Uh, Freekeen.com. Lauren and Mark in the studio with me are critiquing my decision, saying I have taken the low road and that I have been petty. Johnson, on the other hand, says this guy deserves it. Johnson, you're uh, back on Free Talk Live. Hey, so, yeah, there are steps to that, you know, sort of incremental steps to what occurred there. Step one, first, he was rude to you. That's correct. Right? So you you took his picture to identify him. I don't think that you had the intention of posting the picture online. Initially, I did not. I did not initially have that intention. I was going to post it at maximum on the the secret, you know, Facebook group that some of us hang out on. You just tell everybody about the secret Facebook group. It's not a secret anymore. So, so I mean, of course, you know, once this guy threatens you, it's kind of like, you know, knowing Ian, now he's obligated, you know, and yeah. I, I, this would be true of me, too. That's I, all I'm saying, though, said, Johnson, here is, is I'm not disagreeing with this, and I'm not even saying this guy doesn't deserve it. I'm not 100% sure what deserve means. What about you, Mark? It come on, if you took a anything. picture of somebody who called you a moron, if you happen to take a picture of somebody who called you a moron, and he ran up and got in your face and said, if you post that picture anywhere online, I'm going to sue you for defamation. Mark, I think you, too, would find a way. You'd be like, Ian, can you post this on freaking? Would you, Mark? I, I, I well, it, it depends, but I would not claim to have taken the high road when I did it. See? That's my only claim here is, is I that... I wouldn't do it. But it is the high road because photography isn't legal and people need to know this. Agreed. Look, Ian could have gone over there and, um, you know, done some kind of weird dance next to his car too, but that doesn't mean 
that it is the <laughs> like you know nah, 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 I'm near your car. You know, like it's it's not, it's just all I'm. Can you saying do that is, again for the webcam? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Thank yeah, you. The I mean, it's just all I'm saying. The only thing I'm claiming at, at this point is is that look, Ian didn't take the high road. He had an opportunity to show that uh, you know liberty okay. activists can take the high road and do the right uh, thing when confronted have, by old jerks. Have you guys seen? The movie Good Morning Vietnam. Yes. Long okay. time ago. Do you remember that scene where he's teaching English and he says, okay, this lady's in here stabbing you with a fork <laughs> and she's she's killing you. She's killing you. What do you do? What do you do? I'm waiting to die. I am waiting to die. <laughs> That's me. That's me. I just, I'd sit back and I'd be like, okay, well, you're kind of a jerk. But that's the thing is um, your life must be really unhappy. I'm sorry. Because my life is actually really happy, so I don't have to, you know, take retribution against people that say a photograph to me. isn't retribution. But and then again, right. you know, I've taken abuse nor, my whole life, nor, so I don't really care. Nor would I have photographed the average, you know, thug who just happens to walk by and say some sort of thing to me if it was just somebody walking into the it court. Is line, didn't know. It is No, you said no. I. I totally disagree with you guys that it's retributed, retribu- huh. retribution action to post a picture online. If someone threatens your life, because that's what a, a lawsuit threat is, because if you don't comply with those actions, at some point men with guns show up. So if that's, someone no, makes, no, that's no, 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 Johnson, that's bullcrap. He, he said if you post that online, I will you know file a defamation suit you if defamation you stand out in front of my car you may get run you will get run over that is not a threat to run you over it is a um it, it is a warning about what will happen if you do something yes, I that think is not a threat no right so first of all he does not have any right to sue for defamation for someone taking it absolutely is a threat That's mark ridiculous he absolutely did threat. threaten He him. did not threaten if you. If Ian doesn't show well, up, Ian, someone comes and collects him. Well, the good that's news not true is, with a civil case, Johnson. You'll just have the case ruled against you without your, uh, or may you may have the case ruled against Right, and then uh, what if you don't pay? You. The good news is, is that if he's a public figure, he has no grounds to sue you for defamation. He has no grounds anyway. He's a person in he's public. No, yeah, no grounds anyway. He's in public. Well, that there you go. Product. So what's the, what's the problem? There is no right. problem. He was making... There is no problem, and that's the point, is that he was making threats that, one, he oh, didn't have any... discussing morality. Okay. okay, so there's a couple of different threats yeah. here, right? Like, there's different types of threats, if you want to use the term. <laughs> so there is the threat, I am going to punch you in the face. That is a threat, uh-uh. all right? The, I am going to throw my fist outward from my body, and if you run in front of it, you are going to get punched in the face. Then that is not a threat in the same sense. That's a One, warning. Right. It's a qualified threat or a warning or a variety of things. You can use whatever terms an ultimatum. There's different terms for this kind of uh, situation. He made the second one, not the first one. So you're saying that if he had said to me, if you publish that picture online, I'm going to kill you, that that wouldn't be a threat? That would it would be an ultimatum? <laughs> I, that's ridiculous. It I mean, it's be, clearly a threat. Okay, because you, he's. You sound like but, my exes. I mean, I say this all the time. Ian, if you piss if minute. you piss me off, then I'm gonna dump you, and then you know from that they resultively piss me off because of that statement. What so, were you saying, Johnson? It was one step diminished, Ian. It wasn't. He didn't say if you post that picture, I'll shoot you. He said if you post that picture, I'll have men with gun. I'll have men with guns come to shoot you. No, it's a civil it case, just, and that's not the case. Right. Right. What, what Mark is saying is, if you put a qualifier in front of a threat, that it's not a threat. Well, you can call Ludicrous. it something else. At that point, it's a qualified threat. Then, if you want to call it that, um, but I mean, I just want to make a. There's a difference here. If I run around threatening people, that's one thing. It's another thing if you warn people about what's going to happen if they do something. That's an, another entirely I separate think thing. it's important that we lay down our limitations from each other very early on, and I think that's what a, quali- a qualified threat is. And when, if he files a civil defamation suit and he gets a civil ruling against Ian, which is to say that the, there's just some kind of ruling against him, that it's not going to be men with guns chasing after him, then he is able to file that suit. He's completely within his rights to file that suit. He can file that suit tomorrow. Ian could file a defamation suit against him. doesn't pay if they lose a civil suit for not showing up? You don't know much about civil suits, and I'm sorry that um, I've got to educate you right here on the air, but the fact is civil sure. suits... Well, yeah, I'm sure 
sure there are plenty of people that could use that education. Great. Civil suits, basically nothing. If they can get some kind, put some kind of lien on you, Ian doesn't own a house, so they can't put a lien on a house. Um, if they, he doesn't have a... So he could steal his property if Ian didn't have his you know, house protected the way he did. If he was a normal person, it's a threat against his property. That's right. Okay, yep. continue. Yep. And um, if, and or a if, car. He, if so he had a, a W-2 <laughs> job, I don't, I don't know about a, jo- a, a, a car, Ian. And what, ha- what would happen, by the way, if he ignored the lien? Would men with guns show up? Nope. Can't ignore the lien. The lien will be satisfied at closing. That's why I keep saying we're being a little dramatic about this. Nobody's life is at threat here. They'd simply charge you a fine. It's, a, it's They're not going to take you to jail. Johnson, thanks for your call. No, wait, and a go, fine go, is go. not a threat? <laughs> 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 thanks, Johnson. Appreciate hearing from me tonight. Let's go and continue here with, uh, <laughs> let's go to Temper. Temper's on the line via Skype. Temper, go ahead. I got to disagree really strongly with Mark. First of all, when you drive a car, you are legally bound never to run over a pedestrian, no matter what. Well, you're so s- supposed to be, but to I mean, say, sooner or later. For him to say, that if I step out in front of his car, he's going to run me over is actually a legal threat. All right. So if I say that I'm going out shooting on my shooting range, and Ian, if you run in front of the gun when I'm not paying attention while I'm pulling the trigger, you're liable to get shot isn't a threat. It is a warning. Uh, not necessarily, because when you're shooting down a range, you have an obligation not to shoot people. I don't know. I, I mean, if, I, I, I think can't. I'm going to be exonerated in court when I say, well, he was running around on a shooting range. Y- you can't make people stay out of your way. It's, your obligation ends at warning them that you're going to do something. That's it. And then it's well, their decision to step in front of your bullet. In risky behavior, in this case, a car, in Mark's case, a shooting range, which I don't consider an apt analogy but okay so I mean, it's, it's a strained analogy i'll give you that <laughs> i mean you have a car it's your responsibility to first use the brake and tell everything's safe temper thanks so, for your call man appreciate hearing from you uh johnson adds one point he says so the fine isn't a threat i guess the robin hooders should quit what they're doing so apparently the parking department isn't threatening to steal your car if you park in that your space car. That's not a threat at all. It's just a warning. More coming up here. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves. Bring up what you want. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Self-reliance, survival supplies, survival skills, national experts. Get it all at the only free-to-attend national event exclusively for preppers. This spring in Tulsa, it's the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, a must-be-there event. Presented by American Living, this massive expo will include special guests. David Mays from Nat Geo's Doomsday Preppers. Plus, GCN Zone Dr. Joel Wallach via live video conference. Hear Dr. Bones, Nurse Amy, and members of the American Prepper Network. Work, along with many other leading national experts. Learn life-saving tips, CPR, how to handle crisis situations, walk through a bomb shelter, and much, much more. Two big days, April 5th and 6th at the Tulsa Expo Square in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's April 5th and 6th. Doors open at 9 a.m. with absolutely free admission. Don't miss the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, America's largest emergency preparedness event. Get your free tickets now. NPSExpo.com. That's NPSExpo.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Well, George, you can go this way. You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, who do you think 
Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. Now, I have work today. This is... You ain't gonna make it. Wait, 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 wait. Now, wait a minute. Holy oh, crap. Whoa. Hey! Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You'll be in third. What is this? You'll be in third. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want here. Toll free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. The violence continues in Albuquerque. There's an update on that story we can give you when we get a chance. Maybe we'll throw in one or two of the 30 things to stop doing to yourself when we get a chance because our new uh, guest host here, Lauren, a.k.a. Objectivist Girl, is very interested in self-improvement. Plus, we still have to talk about this greater good. I used the term greater good earlier, and Lauren wanted to jump on that, but we've since had call after call after call, so we got to go to the phones first. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and you can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. FreeRoss.org. Ross Ulbricht, the man accused of running the Silk Road, the underground black market that made lots of news uh, recently, not just recently, but within the last couple of years and freeross.org is a site that has been set up to help his defense fund because it is not cheap to hire a fancy attorney, and he's he's got a fancy attorney. I think you're going to need one in this situation. Uh, Joshua Dreidel, his attorney, I believe, made a name for himself by defending people in Guantanamo Bay, if I'm recalling correctly. Anyway, whether Ross actually was or was not behind the Silk Road, if you love the ideas of freedom and you want to see the end of the war on drugs, this is a very important case. And you can help. Uh, if, he, if Ross was Dread Pirate Roberts, if he was the man behind the Silk Road, he really brought a lot of safety and improvements to the black market. He's a hero for that. If he wasn't Dread Pirate Roberts, then he's a man falsely accused and he should be set free. Absolutely. So uh, go to freeross.org and you can uh, pony up some Bitcoin or PayPal or cut them a check and help out Ross's family. They are not rich people. He does not have access to his bitcoins at this time, so he could use your help. Freeross.org. That poor As guy. We continue with your phone calls. Now, you can bring up what you want here, so let's go first to Bill in Nebraska. You're on Free Talk Live. Bill, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing? Hey, great. Go ahead. Um, I, was just, uh, I was just wanting to bring up a point about New Hampshire um, and the habitual offender law, which is not very liberty oriented, I guess. Oh yeah. Well there's terrible. a lot of a lot of things about New Hampshire that aren't very liberty oriented. It just happens <laughs> yeah. to be the freest state, which is to say it's like kind of like saying the best form of cancer. Yeah, and well well basically that uh, habitual offender law I'm from I'm from Nashua. So. You, you from New Hampshire? Uh, yeah. It sounded like it when I when you heard you yes, say sir. it, yeah. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, but I'm I'm in Nebraska for some reason. But uh, and I'm planning on moving back. Great. That is that is the plan. Have so, you signed up for the Free State but, Project? Uh, uh, yes, I have. Okay, great. Thank you. Awesome. Can't wait to meet um, you. Well, so you were saying? Well, well, my my point is, how come this isn't a uh, 
a topic that's discussed very often. Um, I, I don't hear too many po- too many people talking about it. Or you mean the habitual offender uh, law? Yes. I've certainly talked about it in the past uh, more than once here on Free Talk Live. I was in jail uh, when I was in jail for civil disobedience for 58 days. One of the guys I kind of got to know in there uh, was a guy who was in there for a year for driving while his license was suspended. He got caught, and it was you know his fifth time or third time in two decades or something like that. And they hit him with a habitual offender, and he went to jail for a year for that. I mean, there's a ridic- There are people in prison in New Hampshire for driving. And, uh, you know, not driving dangerously, not driving drunk, not driving in any way that would put someone in, in uh, at risk of harm, but just simply driving, going to work. the state didn't approve of it. Without their state papers. Yeah. In fact, the you know, funny other thing. Other human beings. Well, the, the killer point was that I also met a guy in jail, more than one guy, who was in for DUI. And the guys in for DUI, two of them, one was in for three days, the other for 21 days. So the guy who was in jail for a year was there for driving to work. The guys in jail for less than a month were there for DUI. They actually put others in danger. The guy who didn't put anyone in danger, he disobeyed the state's diktats, and so they punished him to the max. So, yeah, I agree with you, Bill. Habitual offender is a terrible uh, situation here in New Hampshire, and maybe you can help kind of lead the charge against that when you get here. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I, I just think it should be something that's on the front burner rather than on the back burner. I think there should be – because when you have people in jail – and for, for I think it's even in a mandatory year in jail for yes, driving I believe after that's true. you get so mandatory year in jail. There's people I, I could I could probably uh rape a kid and not get a year in jail, which is which is pretty messed up. Well I, I doubt it, I, but um here's the problem, Bill. No, is it that we're talking yeah. I get it. I, I get is, the frustration though. It's, it's, terrible. it's frustrating. Now here I am, I'm a convicted felon. Um, the convicted felon in possession of weapons laws in New Hampshire are the most draconian of all 50 states. It is illegal in this state for me to possess a serrated plastic picnic knife, according to the way the law is written. It's it's a up You're to kidding. up to 10 years in prison for me to cut my meat, and that what? is it's it's insane. And the problem is, Bill, the, just the problem is is. You're easy to hate. If you're a, um, you know, if if you're somebody who's been convicted of something, it's just easy for people to hate you, and therefore it's difficult for politicians mm. to say, "Oh yeah, let me let me raise this flag, and everybody will get behind it." We'll call it the convict it's flag. It's just not popular. Is We're going to have to have a whole lot more liberty-oriented state reps before anything like repealing a pit- habitual offender will be a possibility. Uh, or changing the knife regulations. It's a weapons. really easy way as a as a rep, as a politician, to to go ahead Tough and on crime. to garner say twenty percent of the extra of the yeah. vote by just saying, "Hey, look, I'll do and I'll vote and say anything against somebody who's been convicted because it's easy and popular." They're not just regular offenders; they're habitual. We want to make it difficult okay. for them not to. We want to make it difficult for them to integrate back into society. We want to make it as hard as possible. Once they right. get into the system, we want to make sure they get thrown back over over again so the taxpayers have to feed them and house them. But I, I totally agree, Bill, and I would like to see that issue be brought to the yeah, forefront. We need to get a group together for that. If, if you would like to start a group when you get here, let me know because I want to get involved. That is heinous that we are doing that to individuals. You should never be punished twice for a crime. I call that double jeopardy. I think that what they're doing is double jeopardy. Habitual. Oh, but it's not a habit- crime. It's a traffic violation. It's right. a big difference. Yep. Well, yeah, nobody's a victim, I mean, right? There's no victim. I, I could let's say I get too many traffic. Let's say I get because a serious offense they determine as driving after suspension in New Hampshire. You can get your license suspended very easily. It happens to a lot more, of people. And then how, yeah, how are more, you supposed to go yeah. to work? How are you supposed to support a family? How are you supposed to pay the rent if you can't even go somewhere? And it can be very difficult to go places in New Hampshire during the wintertime uh, if you don't have a car. So it makes life very, very hard on people. I share your concerns, Bill, and we do talk about that here on Free Talk Live. And, and thank you. Look forward to seeing you out here in New Hampshire. We need more people. I mean, that's just the fact is. The reason why your favorite issue isn't at the forefront is because you're not here right. uh, taking it to the forefront. But even if you were here, you'd still need more people supporting you, and that means we need more people inside the system running for political office. You know what Daryl Perry told me today as we were driving to Concord to go and testify on a, a Senate bill? 40% 
of all of the state rep races in New Hampshire go unopposed. 40% go unopposed? 40%. It's huge. I mean, I knew there was quite a number, but that's a lot. There's a huge opportunity there for politically wow. active free state project participants. Even if you don't win, you could at the very least be the opposition. You could enter a race against an incumbent, likely, uh, and at the very least get ideas of freedom out into the media. Because whenever right. you run for office, the media wants to interview you, usually here in New Hampshire. So it's a good way to spread the ideas of freedom. Even if you don't win, all of those races should be challenged. We need to have enough people here in New Hampshire who are willing to run for office who are who are available to do this stuff. Unopposed this these people, 40% oh, of these races, they're just walking to me. into office. Stunning to me. We're, we're missing a huge opportunity. That's ridiculous. And we have so many articulate human beings that are at, in the liberty movement. Well, I don't so know that, if we're missing ridiculous. the opportunity. There are a lot of politically active people in the Free State Project, and it does take two years. You have to have lived here two years in order to run uh, for state yeah, rep. So you does. can't just make the move and put your name on the ballot, uh, at least not for state rep. You can do that for things like mayor, city council, so you can kind of get your mm -hmm. feet wet in politics here. But, you know, it's New Hampshire, if you go to the 101 Reasons to Move to New Hampshire, which is a great document on the Free State Project website, there's a a political section there that really outlines why New Hampshire is a great place to actually have a chance at winning. That's why Free State Project participants have actually won, as opposed to libertarians anywhere else in the country. Mm -hmm. They can't win hardly anything besides soil and water commission. I mean, that's really Did one of dog them actually, catcher. One of them must have won soil and water commission. Th that's what I've saying, seen. I've seen okay. them win soil and water commission here and there across the country. But that's it. Here in New Hampshire, we've actually had Liberty people elected as both Democrats and Republicans, but only about a dozen at any given time in the state legislature. Now, there are more than a dozen who are kind of Liberty oriented, but I'm just saying a dozen free state project participants have been in the legislature. And that's it's still the early days of this movement. We still have people like that gentleman who are still on the outside of New Hampshire, who are yet to come here. Yet and to we're come already back rocking it. And it's already really amazingly successful. We'll continue here, and you can share what you want on the air with us at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Skype us, LRN.FM is the username there. Our three's next, Free Talk Live. Remember how bad your allergies were last year? <laughs> When they hit again, be prepared with new Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour, the first full-strength 24-hour prescription nasal spray available without a prescription. Unlike antihistamines, it blocks more of the body's chemical responses that cause nasal allergy symptoms, relieving the worst of them, including congestion, for 24 hours. New Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed may take up to one week of daily use to feel the most symptom relief. Here's something you don't hear on the radio every day. Someone who can't see. I am totally blind. And I go through periods where I'm unable to sleep at night and feel like I'm constantly running but can never quite catch up. But this isn't a sleep problem. It's something called non-24. Learn about the link between total blindness and your symptoms. Visit learnmorenon24.com or call 855-856-2424. Sponsored by Vanda Pharmaceuticals. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. 
I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,290, silver opened at $19.97, and Bitcoin is trading at $482.10. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner, one terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication along with posters and promotions materials. Online at affordablesound.com or call them 512-459-5253. In the news, since the IRS recently ruled that Bitcoin is property and not currency, how can it be used in the crime of money laundering? That's the question being asked by the lawyer for alleged Silk Road operator Ross Ulbricht. Forbes reports that attorney Ross Dradle has filed a motion arguing that all charges against Ulbricht, including money laundering and conspiracy to traffic in narcotics, be dismissed. More controversy in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where eyewitnesses are questioning the shooting of a fugitive by deputy U.S. Marshals. KRQE is reporting that witnesses claim that Marshals, when they encountered the wanted man sitting in a car, gave their commands to surrender, and immediately opened fire. Eyewitnesses say the fugitive was not armed, sitting with his hands on the steering wheel. He was transported for hospitalized treatment. The outrage follows last Sunday's massive protest in Albuquerque, held to voice opposition to last month's fatal police shooting of homeless resident James Boyd. In an effort to combat food shortages and hoarding, the Venezuelan government has introduced a new identification card system for purchasing food. President Nicolas Maduro stated that the new measures will reduce black market sales of food products. The new measures include fingerprint scanning, taking down cell phone numbers of customers, and banning miners from purchasing food. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem. Operated by Liberty Beat founder John Bush. Online, SovereignBTC.com. Support comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central, CoreyMooreShow.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Inc. Precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977. Online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A controversial classified Senate report on torture concludes that waterboarding and other torture methods did not provide key intelligence in the search for Osama bin Laden. According to the Associated Press and the Washington Post, U.S. officials who have seen the report state that intelligence of significance was not gained through torture, and in some cases, the CIA lied about the effectiveness of information gathered using enhanced interrogation methods. On Sunday afternoon, between 100,000 to 500,000 Taiwanese citizens took to the streets of Taipei to protest a possible international agreement with China that they believe will hurt the sovereignty of their nation. The so-called Sunflower Movement has been occupying Taiwan's legislature for two weeks. At one point, nearly 20,000 protesters held the presidential office building. Concerned citizens believe the cross-strait trade and services agreement will give China more influence over Taiwanese matters. NATO announced a suspension of all practical civilian and military cooperation with Russia on Tuesday, condemning the country's illegal intervention in Ukraine as Moscow turned the financial screws on Kiev by hiking the cost of gas. Al Jazeera reports that NATO foreign ministers have issued a strongly worded report that says the Russian takeover of Crimea represented a violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks. CHL courses, self-defense training, and firearm sales. Give them a call, 512-731-3585, or online at centraltexasgunworks.com. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwest Burritos with Homemade Tortillas, online at cabobobs.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Remember, spread liberty with a smile. It's the Onion Radio News. A spokeswoman gives birth to a spokeschild. This is Doyle Redland reporting. 
Tacoma spokeswoman Tammy Barker became the proud mother of a bouncing baby spokeschild last night. According to spokespeople, Barker, a spokeswoman for a Tacoma-based pharmaceutical firm, the birthing process was a major success. Peter Wahlberg, spokesman for Tammy's husband Phil, had this to say. At 9.17 p.m. last night, an eight-and-a-half-month-old spokes fetus was delivered alive and through the miracle of birth became a seven-pound, six-ounce spokes child. Spokes father and spokes mother are doing fine. Spokeswoman Barker is expected to be released from St. Robert's Hospital tomorrow. The spokes child will remain in the hospital's media care unit for several weeks of training. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, and we're launching into the third hour. Plenty of participation tonight, meaning uh, you can get your thoughts on the air here about whatever you want. Just dial in toll-free, as a number of people have done, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That uh, toll-free number is brought to you by ProXPN. Also, we have Skype. You can Skype into the show via username lrn.fm. Just send a contact request to that username first, and then you can easily Click the call button and call us up about whatever happens to be on your mind. We might sneak in a couple of the things to stop doing to yourself just for fun tonight. Uh, Lauren is joining us as a guest co-host on Free Talk Live. Having fun so far, it seems. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. This is a nice break from uh, doing Objectivist Girl, actually. Which you were saying during the break that you're constantly, because you are Objectivist Girl, that is kind of the the, the persona the that you've created for yourself. Yeah. Uh, objectivistgirl.com is your website. Naturally, you're going to be attracting a lot of people who have questions about objectivism mm-hmm. and also people who would like to debate you and critique you and things like that. And so I can see how you would get overwhelmed with that. Oh, yeah. Um, but this has been a, a welcome respite for you. Oh, yeah. It's, it's been nice to talk about some other things and show everybody that I can talk about more than just objectivism. Excellent. Uh, the toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. And you may bring up anything. Let's go right back into your phone calls and thoughts. We have Brett in Maryland. Brett, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Hey, super. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to talk about the Stevenson University lockdown that happened uh, a couple of days ago, apparently. Is this in Maryland, Stevenson University? Yeah. Okay. What happened? What happened was a guy was walking around, uh, was suspected to be carrying a firearm on campus, and they pretty much locked the entire campus down for several hours, and a huge police um, overreaction happened where they oh, had boy. SWAT teams out and like a Bearcat-like vehicle with a turret on it shown on the um, news I was watching. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah, this happened this, about a week ago in Connecticut, too. It did. Yeah, this no, just no, no, no. happened at Ball State, my old university, okay. too. It, uh, I don't know about the Ball State one, but the Connecticut one wasn't a week ago. It was the video that came out from back in November. Oh, you're right. It yeah. happened in November. But, but the, what was the your... video broke about a yeah, week ago? Yeah, um, I got a text because I get emergency texts, and I never bothered to shut them off for my university because mm-hmm. I just graduated in May. So, um, which I should get on. But I got a text saying that uh, all the buildings were locked down because somebody had seen somebody with that was armed and uh, they shut down the building like every armed person is a terrorist, right? I That's your point, right? Is that, you know, this is a grave overreaction, right? Yeah, it was insane. And it looked like these guys were in like a war zone. They had assault vests on, um, high caliber like weapons with helmets and everything. And the kicker is it turns out that it was possibly a student carrying a camera tripod. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Wow. And I'm thinking, what if this kid went to a bathroom and he went to, he just went to the bathroom and these police started showing up and he's walking around with a camera tripod. What if he got killed? Oh my god. Knowing how the uh, trigger happy how trigger happy cops can be, it certainly wouldn't surprise me if something like that happened. And, and it's shocking to know how common this apparently is. Maybe it's fairly recent that this has become common, but it's the first time that uh, that a raid like this on a school has come across our show was just a few weeks ago, the, the Connecticut story from November. I couldn't and find uh, anything on Ball State from, um, you know, what the, uh, just recently, but it happened in November in Ball State, too, Yeah, right here. This is scary stuff. The video that we saw that was taken in Connecticut 
And uh, the video showed basically some college students hanging out in somebody's dorm room. Then armed men with fatigues on uh, bust in and they hold people at gunpoint. They force them to walk down several flights of stairs. There are cops everywhere. They get outside. There's the bear cat, which you described, Brett. I mean, it, it almost sounds like it's the ridiculous. exact same situation. And really, it's it's more of that kind of acclimating people, acclimating young people to this police state. We've had the Boston bombing situation where they did the same thing in a na- you know neighborhoods in Watertown, Massachusetts. So they are absolutely you know, getting people ready for more of this kind of behavior in the future in their life as an adult. But what are, are there videos, Brett, where the college students, did anybody, you know, speak up for their rights? What was this, the scene on the ground from your perspective? Well, the, the uh, news that I was watching was a local news and they had, um, they were interviewing parents who the police weren't letting them anywhere near the campus because they, mm-hmm. For some reason, someone mistook a camera tripod as a freaking firearm, and they're not telling the um, parents what's going on. The parents keep asking and asking, but in the end, they're just like, oh, it's okay. It's better safe than sorry, and that kind of concerns me. Like, if they're going to overreact this bad to a tripod, what are they going to do if the dollar collapses? This is a philosophical issue with our society that we think everybody that is armed is trying to aggress Most people with firearms are just trying to protect themselves. Um, And so we need to change this mindset in our culture that everybody that carries a gun is an evil person. Because, I mean, I love carrying guns. Heck, I love going to the shooting range from time to time. I'm a big gun proponent. And this is ridiculous that, that I'm seen as an aggressive person because I would like to know how to defend myself. Even here in New Hampshire, there are no guns allowed on college campuses. Now, New Hampshire is one of the most gun-friendly places in the United States. It's like in the top three of gun-friendly states. But when you cross onto that college campus, you cross into a, you know, a dangerous area as far as you're not allowed to have a gun there. Uh, however, I was actually on the Keene State campus recently. Uh, we go there somewhat regularly to do not just outreach, but also the, the cafeteria is actually not bad. Um, so we were eating at the, the Keene State uh, campus cafeteria, and there were uh, people running around with, um, I don't know if they're Nerf guns or something like that, but some sort of obviously not a real gun kind of guns, like mm-hmm. toy guns. Oh, it's big for that. They, they do like when they do like dorm campus nerf gun battles yeah they were playing zombies Uh, versus humans humans versus zombies oh we did that at my school all so that was okay so wait so at your uh yeah they 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 put socks in their nerf guns you put socks in your nerf guns and you shoot them at people um that have the um green bandana which signifies that they're a zombie I don't know. I agree. Yeah, there's like a zombie, zombie bandana but, you know, and there's a human bandana. Anyway, regardless of the rules, what you're saying is that they oh, freaked yeah. out over something else, but they were fine with people running around with uh, oh, yeah. toy this guns? Oh, yeah. This was like a huge nerdgasm fest. And well, it was great. Nerf guns are, uh, you know, neon green and yellow and yeah. orange, so they're difficult to mistake for a real gun. Whereas an airsoft gun, on the other hand, mm-hmm. it's all it's got is that little red tip, and I can see why that might confuse people. And BB guns don't have anything, so I can I can see why people might be confused. I'm really concerned because it's it's difficult to even transport a gun these days. Were you in the midst of this, Brett? This lockdown? No, but I have friends who go to Stevenson University, okay. and I've yet to talk to them about it. I'll actually post the uh, story. On uh, the Free Talk Live. Yeah, please that post is. that on freetalklive.com. Yeah, I, read I mean, that. it's there's a bunch of news stories about it, but what I'd really like to see is the video from a student, because that was the real like clincher for what happened in Connecticut, which again was an almost an identical sounding situation. It's one thing to hear the news report on it and get the helicopter shot from above with you know the troopers or whatever running around. It's another thing to have the perspective of a college student who's being ordered around, who's being yelled at by these men having guns pointed at them. Uh, so if there's a video like that that you can dig up, yeah, also po- cool. please post that. We'd that like would be to cool that. to get yeah, a video was, from some a, of those people. Sorry, sorry Brett, what? There was a video I was watching on the news. They actually were pulling the kid out with the tripod right at like, his arm. There was like three SWAT team members by him. <laughs> Do you have an estimate, by the way, of how many police officers were involved in this? In the Connecticut school, it was about 100 from what I could tell. It sounds about that or maybe a little bit less. Cause that's a I was huge, that's like an occupying force. Members. That is scary, scary stuff. And thank you, Brett, for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. 
Let's continue with Dave in Minnesota. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind tonight? Yeah, Ian, how are you this evening? Welcome, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I was listening earlier, uh, and Lauren had made a statement that uh, if you make a threat, sometimes the only thing they do is they might fine you or something like that. I can tell you of an incident that happened last year involving myself. Last July, uh, somebody was setting off loud fireworks out here where my horses are. They were upsetting my animals. Mm. When I drove over to the neighbors about a mile away to confront them and ask them if they would please stop, uh, I was attacked by eight individuals. Whoa. They tried to pull me out of my vehicle. Hold on. I want you to tell the rest of the story, but I want to make sure you have time for it. So stand by, Dave. We're going to bring you back here in a moment on Free Talk Live. You can take control. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. If you've got aches and pain and soreness, it could be chronic inflammation. Listen to Dave talk about Relief Factor 4. I was in a sawmill accident and suffered with pain and discomfort for 60 years. I heard about Relief Factor 4 and decided to order it. And in four days, I was walking without a limp and without pain. I am thrilled. For more information or to order Relief Factor 4, go online at relieffactor4.com. That's relieffactor4.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Because we are smothering in spam, please do not reply to all when you can instead reply. I was recently among over a hundred invited to a corporate reunion. It's always a warm affair, and that's the problem. Enthusiasm for our upcoming get-together caused many recipients to RSVP the organizer with a cheery reply to all. I can't wait. Then others piled on with a reply to all to that. Then the, I'm out of my office now, auto responders joined in. So I replied to all, asking that we all reply only to the organizer. Hey, at least I tried. One invitee, apparently retired, shot back, point taken, but I really like seeing the responses since they're so positive. Smiley face. This better be an open bar. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hardworking men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. 
Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. Bring up what you want. Dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And Skype on in. Username is LRN.FM. You do have to send a contact request, and then it'll be easy for you to connect with us as soon as that is approved, which it will be. So uh, go ahead and send that on. And joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. And Lauren. And Mark. Lauren's here courtesy of ObjectivistGirl.com. That's where you can get more of her. And you're making videos? Is that right? Oh, yeah. How often? Uh, I make them once a week. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm about to do a live uh, live show, too, so you'll get to hear Excellent. from me twice a week. For uh, for how long have you been making videos? About as Objectivist Girl. four months, and I've only been promoting it for about three months, okay. and I've already got like 1,200 followers. Not too shabby. Insane. That's great. Cool. So, objectivistgirl.com for more of Lauren. We continue here with your calls in moments. I want you to imagine being able to spend your bitcoins with a credit card through a completely decentralized non-bank system. You swipe and bitcoins removed from your wallet. This makes bitcoin just as easy to use um, as regular money is in the meat space world. This technology would be really pretty awesome, right? It'd be worth trying out getting involved in here on the in the very early stages because it's that important well you can you can go to mybtc.cc they've got Indi- indiegogo campaign going on but they've got all the stuff in place you're basically just helping them to uh, to get to move forward you're you're buying stuff there it's not the you're not investing in the cum you're getting something um, in real life today that's mybtc.cc mybtc.cc. Let's go back to the phones. Dave is in Minnesota. You were telling us you had just barely begun a story about uh, you're living out in kind of a rural area. You've got horses. Your neighbors living a mile down a road down the road were setting off fireworks. It was near enough to where your horses were being very up. They were very upset about this, and you went there to ask them nicely to just go ahead and cut out stopping the you know stop the fireworks and you said eight people attacked you you were pulled from your truck or that's just where the story cut off so can you continue please dave yeah we we live uh out in a remote area like i say my neighbor was a mi- he lives a mile away and they came down here by my property and set off fireworks. Oh, that, that doesn't make much sense. Was. Wow. They've okay. got their own property. Why that's what I was going to say a mile exactly. away. Exactly. <laughs> So that's why I went down there to confront them and ask them if they would please stay down by their property. And when I did this, I was attacked by eight individuals. They tried to pull me out of my pickup truck. They're beating on my pickup truck. And in the process, I pulled a rings gun, which is a plastic uh, model of a gun. It's something that they use for police training. Hmm, okay. it, do- it doesn't even have a moving part on it. It's plastic, okay? Yeah, this would be something that you might use to practice drawing. That way you wouldn't exactly. risk uh, exactly. shooting yourself. So, right. so I'm trying to beat these eight individuals off with this rings gun. I finally got back in my pickup, put it in gear, and drive away. Mm-hmm. So I get home, I call 911, Average response time in this area, because we're out so far, is an hour. hour. and a half. At least an hour. So mm-hmm. I'm waiting and waiting and waiting, and finally, at 11 o'clock at night, this happened about 8 o'clock in the evening, 11 o'clock at night, the 911 operator calls me and says, Miss, uh, would you please go down to the end of your driveway? Don't take any firearms with you. And don't be confrontational. I said, excuse me? Why would I take firearms, first off? And they wanted me to go down and talk to the sheriff's department, Mm -hmm. the St. Louis County Sheriff's Department. So I did. I walked down there. I had a glass of Kool-Aid in in one hand. Uh, Now, this is in the summertime. I got on a T-shirt and shorts, so it's not like I'm in uh, heavy uh, clothing. Right. You're not wearing fatigues and carrying your AR. Right, right. Exactly. I go down there, I've got about 10 police officers, one holding an M14 full automatic weapon pointed at me, and they're all saying, we understand you tried to kill your neighbors. I said, excuse me? I said, 
we've got a misunderstanding here. There's something wrong. I don't understand what you're talking about. They said, we have been down to your neighbors. We got statements from all eight individuals. They said, you pulled a gun and you tried to kill them. <laughs> you're under arrest. Whoa. That oh, evening at 11 o'clock at night, I go to jail. This is on a Thursday, 4th of July. I had to wait Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep. Monday, I'm supposed to go to court for attempted murder, okay, hmm. and making terroristic threats. Oh, wow. My terroristic threat was back off. Yep. That was the terroristic threat that I made. It was back off. And you were off. saying the back off as they were trying to pull you out of the truck and attack exactly, you. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> so so retaliatory morning, force. Yeah. Right. So Monday morning, before I go to court, the district attorney came down to the jail cell and he says, well, we apologize, sir, but uh, while this was happening, one of these individuals was taping it and took a film of the entire incident. Really? And they sent it to the DA trying to get me into more trouble. The DA looks the film over and he says, obviously, you were just trying to defend yourself. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Thank goodness uh, but, uh, for idiots. <laughs> exactly. But my point is, they can twist this stuff around any way they want. Just saying back off is considered a terroristic threat in St. Louis County, Minnesota. For me to pick up a rings gun, which is a plastic toy, to defend myself against eight individuals that are committing assault, assault and battery on me, and trying to do massive bodily harm to me, is against the law. There are so many things wrong with this entire story, but the one that really stands out to me is the fact that the police officers assumed mm -hmm. that because exactly. they had a majority. Oh, there's eight people. Yeah, oh. there's a majority. And that's the thing is that this happens all the time is they assume that because people are in the majority, they're in the right. And mm. we are supposed to be a society that believes in the will of the minority. Mm. But yet we treat the majority as if they have some supreme power over knowledge. Knowledge. And that's not well, that's not the thing. It's it, it's totally wrong. And I think what happened to you is just heinous. I, you know, Dave, I'm wondering, uh, are you still living in the same place? Are those people still there? What? Yeah, they're still there. They're, uh, the <sighs> thing of it was that after this entire incident happened, the district attorney told me, quote, end quote, uh, just go home and be friends with your neighbors. <laughs> How can you possibly be friends after this? I mean, this I, is the I problem. Don't even know I these people, move. nor do I want to know these people. Yeah. Right. You you were trying to be friends with them by telling them, "Hey, please, uh, you know, please take the uh, the fireworks elsewhere." You, you know, for whatever reason, why are you on my property setting off or near my property setting off fireworks when you have property down the road? Set it off right. on your own exactly. property. Exactly. I mean. That's the other thing. I don't is, think it was an unreasonable request myself. Nope, no, you were so. wielding a gun on your own property, too. I mean, that's just yeah, the thing. You were protecting thing your property. It. It, was a, it wasn't even a gun. It's a toy. I know. Yeah. Well, if you had used a gun, I don't think there would have been any problem No, you here. wouldn't have been in the in, wrong. In my opinion, if you would have brandished at this point, you would have. Uh, all you would have been doing is trying to get out of there. Exactly. Well, I'm glad that it panned out for you. Thank goodness that guy recorded the video. Otherwise, we might not be talking to you today. Dave, thank oh. you for sharing your you story. I appreciate hearing okay. from you tonight. And good luck out there. Uh, Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. Still time for your calls and thoughts. Also, we'll sneak in a couple of the 30 things that you got to stop doing to yourself. And before we do that, we'll talk about the greater good coming up on Free Talk Live. Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. 
Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, taxhelponline.com. That's taxhelponline.com. Free Talk Live. We're talking about piracy. The Barbary pirates were attacking um, American merchant ships and taking the sailors into slavery. Yep. Um, which right. is a little worse than conscribing them like England was. England was just making them, you know, do a little bit of work. I mean, certainly the slavery, but to a much lesser extent. <laughs> um, when, Did they get the doubloons? That's what I want. When, the, Avast. <laughs> when somebody from the Sudan takes you into slavery, uh-huh. you're in slavery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's slavery in its uh, raw sense. Mm-hmm. So he sent over the Navy in order, um, was it? Well, that's the risk you take I'm on the high seas. Trying to think of uh, this this famous uh, American pirate, but I can't remember his name offhand. Blackbeard. Now, now. Redbeard. <laughs> no. Goldbeard. <laughs> <laughs> Maroon beard. <laughs> Free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and I... Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration li- of the Department of Health, Education, and Wealth. Fair and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're here to take your calls about whatever you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Our website has a variety of features. They are free. Those other talk show hosts... They will charge you for accessing their websites. We don't do that. You can go. You can actually create the content of the site. Uh, In fact, our website would be a whole lot less interesting if it weren't for listeners like you actually submitting news stories, YouTube videos, blog posts, whatever it is you think is interesting online. You submit it to the front page of the website at freetalklive.com. Now, something I've made a change to recently on the site is on the left-hand side of the website, you go to the front page, look on the left-hand side, there's an email sign-up box. Drop your email in that box. You'll get signed up for our email list, which has been around for a long time. But recently, uh, we've had a, a gentleman come in offering you know, to kind of help us tweak things when it comes to the emails. And he's done a great job of, uh, of doing that. He's created weekly digest emails that go out and inform you of what the most popular stories were, uh, were on They're our website. They're worth getting. 
for the last week. They give you the Free Talk Live Digest, which is about an hour and a 15 minute long show of just like pieces of the show put together. So if you don't have 21 hours a week to listen to Free Talk Live, you probably have an hour and 15 minutes. Exactly. So you get that in your email box on a weekly basis. Plus, every now and then you'll get an update on something that's just, you know, can't wait for that email. So uh, go and get signed up for our email list over at freetalklive.com or go to news.freetalklive.com. The email sign up is there as well, plus links to our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter, which are great ways for you to stay in touch with the show uh, and you know follow us during the show. And there's news posts that we make during the show and also outside of show hours on our uh, social bookmarking sites as well. So again, go to news.freetalklive.com. You can sign up for the email list there. You can follow us on your favorite social network. As we continue here in just in a moment. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking about the the guy from the last segment. What was his name, Ian? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Shoot, the guy from Minnesota that, that just called in. He, <laughs> once uh, the person's hung up, uh, uh, once the call is disconnected. <laughs> well, we don't have that on the computer any longer. So right, there's no there. backlisting. On you guys are so good at this. Yeah, <laughs> like, so Mark, bad. I think it started with an M. I can't remember. I feel like that's <laughs> anyway, she's making fun, but she doesn't remember either. By yeah, right. the way. No, <laughs> she, no, she's like, don't. I'm not the professional. I remember I, the story. I'm simply, I guessed. How how? That's right. <laughs> that, that, but the point was, as I was thinking during the break, is what he really needs needed in this situation was the freedom cam if Ooh, he had been in his been vehicle yeah, he was in his truck when this situation occurred mm. the freedom cam in my vehicle if this would have occurred to me the freedom cam would have been running because it t- turns on yeah. automatically when i turn and on the, the key the people attacking you wouldn't have known about it they wouldn't have known they would have been do- going about whatever they were doing and and i would have had all this video uh saved Ready to go. Right. And, and you'd have two angles, too, because the Freedom Cam has the front. It records. It's in your dashboard, you know, right there on your windshield. So it's recording the front of everything that happens in front of your car and recording also, secondly, inside the cab. So you would have si- simultaneous recording. He said there were eight people trying to pull him out of a, the cab. So you would see anybody trying to pull you out. You'd also see anybody who's in front of the car at that moment as well. I mean, you get a, a, almost a full 360-degree de- coverage of this. And Enough to, uh, to handle that, plus the audio, too. Right. So it's freedomcam.net. And what I think is great, the best about it is, is that it's on when you turn the vehicle on. You don't have to think about it. You install it. You, you don't think about it again until you yep. have some kind of incident, whether it's an accident or a situation like this or law enforcement officer that disagrees with uh, your remembrance of things. It's freedomcam.net. And there's now two freedom cams on yep. the site. Two different types to choose from at freedomcam.net. All right, let's go back to the phones and the fun coming up. The greater good. We'll talk about that. Uh, the objectivist girl objected when uh, she can't that. be wrong. She's objective. Let's go to <laughs> Vincent. It's not subjective. I feel objectified in <laughs> New York. Vincent, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how are you? Hey, Vincent. Uh, I can barely hear you, but go ahead. Oh, can you hear me now? Hello? Yeah, but much better. All right. Hey, sorry about that. No worries. Um, uh, I, I just want to let you guys know that I'm not a statist, okay? Because I know New York is still a statist, but I'm not a statist, okay? That's I just a good way to start. Right to know that. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I recently became a real estate agent, and uh, there's these um, laws called the fair housing laws, mm-hmm. all right? And, like, there's this one aspect of the law. It's called the um, steering laws. And, like, basically, all right. For example, all right, let's say you're a um, a, a, um, a agent, right? Okay, so I come to you, and I go, all right, I want to live in an area where there's white people. You go, okay, I'll show you where there's an area where there's white people. <laughs> you get to get charged with basically discrimination right there, and you and you lose your license, and your company goes out of business pretty much. Mm. It's like it's like you get caught for that. So and like, and how like, would you, you know, list like, a house where there are white people? You, your house is where your house is, right? I mean— I yeah, couldn't like, list. Yeah, like, um, uh, they like basically um, uh, go off of it of uh, um, uh, like um, uh, what the um, neighborhood is. So like, let's say like you know, um, uh, you like ask for you know like can you oh. um, uh, show me houses where there's like a, um, a white neighborhood or something like that, and then like you show them houses in a white neighborhood. So they basically you know the the um, state is basically saying oh you're a, um, a racist. Now and, let me you know, ask you this: basically. if if I come to you and I do say. I want to, um, you know, I want to live in a neighborhood where white people are. You'd have to say, you'd say what, in order to I comply with the law? Well, well, like, well, like, well, like, like, um, a legal thing to say would be like, okay, um, uh, what kind of house are you looking for? You know, like how big and stuff like that. So basically, avoids the like, you know, kind of question. 
You know, so like pretty much, you know, like I basically ask, you know, like how, you know, like what kind of house you're looking for, you know, how many bedrooms and stuff like that. You say, uh, I want to find a, you know, a three bedroom apartment or something. And then like, and then like, you know, like I go to my computer, be like, okay. And then, and then like, you know, like, I'll just show you like, you know, like different areas. Like, you know, like one, one, one like area will be mixed. The other area would be like, you know, like more white than like anything else, you know, like it, it, it'll just be like, you know, like random like places. But like, I can't actually go to an area that has predominantly white people. Yeah. My, well, well, I would question friend, a customer like that anyway. I mean, they, they do sound like they might be a racist. Bigots and I, have yeah, to live somewhere. Yeah, I, know. And, I agree. Uh, I agree totally. My friend but like, you know, like, is opening up a real but, estate company and actually has the exact same um, mentality as you. As, as you do, people should be allowed. I I am assuming you think people should be allowed to live where they want to live and be able to ask any relevant questions. One of the things that we want to do in uh, the Liberty community is provide housing for all of the people that are moving here. And so he's opening up a visit, Granite Finch. And one of the things that he's got to avoid is being able to say to these people is, is being able to say to these people legally that, you know, uh, and weed out the people that are just are liberty people so that or weed in the people that are liberty people because otherwise he's going to have less housing for the liberty people. So he only wants to um, bring people in that are just liberty people like minded. Right. Which might be and running afoul people. of some sort of housing Yeah, law. exactly. And so this is technically, like, against the law, I guess. And it, uh, this yeah. is a similar oh, yeah. situation. Yeah, that is definitely against the law. Oh, exactly. my God. So like, there's you know, no like, way around this. We... It's stupid. The whole thing's stupid. Yeah, it is absurd. Like, you know, like, I think people should be able to live where, like, they want to live. You know, exactly what, like you said. And, like, you know, doesn't really matter what the reason is. I mean, like, you know, like, you know, as a sovereign human being, we should be able to choose... You know, like which area we, we want to live in regardless I agree of, with you. Of, of People should be able to discriminate. However, it would make me very uncomfortable if I were a real estate agent and someone came to me and asked me that I would want to... Well, you I have a right exactly. to drop them as a client. I yeah. agree. I would feel I like, agree, yeah. why feel do you very... care about that? What is, are you have you a right a to... Yeah, I agree. I agree. I was guilty on the same I don't way want to too. help I a agree. racist. Right. You have a right to yeah, be a racist, too. but I don't have to associate with you. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't. You know, like... Now, is that just to clarify, uh, Vincent? Is that a New York specific rule that you're talking about? I don't about? think so. No, that's New uh, Hampshire no, too. No, okay. no, 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 no. It's um, a federal. Um, federal. Actually, the um, uh, the um, uh, HUD actually has testers going around the country trying to find um, uh, brokers that discriminate. Sting so, like, it's like, oh. Yeah, huh. yeah. So basically, it's like it's like government agents. You know, did, did I call you up? Hey, like, you know, like, they like pretend to be Bob from like Minnesota or something. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, um, uh, I'm moving to New York. Uh, can you show me an area where there's Jewish people? And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they like pretend to be some guy, mm-hmm. and like, you know, they'll they like try to like get you. You know, yeah. like, wow. Sting <laughs> operations for the real estate Vincent, business. Vincent, thank you for out. the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. <laughs> yep. Thanks for. St- Sharing the story. That's really interesting. He says um, for Jewish people because there are places where Jews tend to congregate. How do they? How do they end up? Is, does it have to be word of mouth? I guess so. You just have to know where Chinatown is if you want to live right. there. Uh, 855-453. That's the toll-free number. You can take control here. And if you want to move into a place with other Free State Project participants, check out porkmanor.com. Uh, I guess as, long, as long as you're not a you know registered real estate agent, then it's not illegal to do those things, right? I guess not. I don't, I don't know. know. Don't take legal advice from me. More <laughs> coming up. This is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com 
Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and to truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. Honey, look, I'm getting jerky with it. You're getting what? Getting jerky with it. I'm getting jerky at jerkyspot.com. They've got over 100 delicious jerkies to choose from, like crunchy maple bacon jerky, cranberry jalapeno, and even liquor-infused beef jerky. Go to jerkyspot.com today and save $5 on your first order. Use the code TRYJERKYSPOT. Jerkyspot.com. It's all your favorite jerky in one spot. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now. 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss. A once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial. 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet, with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. We talk live. Moments remain. On the air, you can take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Don't forget, if you support Free Talk Live and you want to help us out, you can become a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. Simple concept. The idea is that you send 5 bucks a month into Free Talk Live, use any major credit card through PayPal, use Visa or MasterCard right there on the front page of the website, and we'll take that money in and invest it into Free Talk Live. Right now, we're doing a fundraiser to help uh, get some Google AdWords going on. They're actually, we're already doing the Google AdWords, but to help continue to fund Google yeah, AdWords. do more. Do more, perhaps, as well. Uh, we're looking to get uh, five bucks a month from you if you're not yet a Free Talk Live amplifier, because it will be doubled. We've got some generous contributors who've offered up to $950 per month in matching contributions. So we still have a few hundred bucks per month that we can raise to meet that maximum level of $950 per month, and you can help us with that. So if you go to amp.freetalklive.com, you sign up, you get access to the perks like the amp-only call-in lines, the amp-only podcast, the brand-new amp-only Facebook group, which has been very, very popular. Uh, you get access to all the perks, and you help Free Talk Live, and we'll double the money. So if you're putting in 5 bucks, it's like doing 10 and that helps us a lot. So please go to amp.freetalklive.com. Again, that's amp 
www.freetalklive.com. You know, we had a couple calls on hold, but they mysteriously dropped during the break, which means that uh, we do have time, uh, Lauren, objectivistgirl.com, Lauren, to talk about the greater good. I mentioned that term earlier in the show tonight, and you had a few things to say about it, but now you get to actually say them. Oh, yeah, it's on now. So, um... <laughs> So anyway, the greater good. This is uh, this is very altruist. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it in Doge language, so maybe you'll understand. Um, such statist, much government, such or so, so collectivist. Yeah, so collectivist. Now the altruism thing. That's something that Ayn Rand had a real problem with, right? Greater, yeah. Greater good has to do with. Doing something for the majority of people and excluding the minority. You should absolutely never collectivize a society because you're going to do the individual a disservice. So uh, the definition of altruism from the dictionary is the principle or practice of unselfish concern for or devotion to the welfare of others. Right. The but problem is the unselfish right. part. Well, she, but she's right about um, the fact is, is if you're going to be, uh, um, you know, if, if you're going to do, you, you talked about the greater good. Mm -hmm. The greater good talks about the good for the most people, doesn't it? Right. It's very utilitarian. It's awful. Mm. Well, I don't have a problem with utilitarianism if it, um, you know, things that work. But I, I do. I, I love things that work. <laughs> but, but when you're talking about, uh, you know, designing the whole society around that, then it doesn't work because you're only you're you're only um, crushing individual spirit at that point. Yeah. Okay. So I agree with uh, one point on at least, at least from what I'm understanding of you. And correct me if I'm wrong, Lauren. Uh, you said the issue is the word unselfish in this. Oh yeah. And wouldn't your I mean it, would your argument be that everything you do is selfish and so therefore giving to charity Oh, it's more you know, than that. Is it's, selfish? It should be selfish. That's just it. Um, even though yes, everything you do is selfish, you should think of it as selfish because you should be getting a value exchange. Everything that you do consumes your time and energy. You have a right to that time and energy. And if you decide to give it to something, that is your value exchange. You're getting something back. You're either getting happiness or you're getting appreciation or you're mm -hmm. getting respect or you're getting a good name. Everything that you do has a value return. And nothing should ever be unselfish. That is horrible. Like when I do nice things for my friends, like if I sit and listen to them complain about their day at work, I'm doing it because I either value the friendship or I value the reaction that I get from them when I listen to them. Everything should be selfish. There should be no such thing as altruism. Altruism is a death sentence to your own life. You should be treating your life as if every moment of it has a value to you because you are you should you should value your time on this earth. It's all you have. Or well, I guess if you're, you know, religious, you that I guess if you're religious, it's not all you got. But you know, for us atheists, it's all we got. I I can't say I disagree with anything that uh, that you've said there. And I don't consider myself an objectivist. I don't really know a whole whole lot about it. But I do appreciate the idea that and we were talking about this. I think last night on the show that if you want to be able to help others, you have to be able to take care of yourself. You exactly. have to be coming from a position of uh, self-worth and strength and, and you know, having money. If you want to give money to people, you have to have it first. Right. Uh, that kind of thing. Plus, you want to give time to people, you have to have free time. What would you, who would you rather get something from? Would you rather get somebody, something from somebody that pities you or would you rather get something from somebody that values you, that thinks you're a great person, that respects you as a person, rather than somebody that looks down on you and pats you on the head and says, oh, you poor soul. Isn't well, that so condescending and horrible? Sure. Well, let's come back around to the original statement about the greater good. Right. Because the context in which I used it was, to recap briefly, uh, there was a situation this morning with a guy who uh, was very, very rude to me outside of the courthouse. I recognized him as mm -hmm. someone who appears to work at the courthouse, but I'm not real sure. I took his picture when he came out, went to his car, because I wanted to identify who this character right. was. He further threatened me to say that if I put his picture online, he would sue me for defamation. So at that point, I decided to make a blog post about it. And I said that uh, that I believe that it was for the greater good because right. the argument was the argument was that well this guy should have just been left alone that I was being petty and I should have just let it slide and I said well the uh, you know I'm doing this for the greater good for the community the activist community to show them who this character is to give them an idea of mm -hmm. you know because I could tell the story hey some guy said this about me 
or I can show who this individual is because he's around a lot. This wasn't just some random schmo. This mm -hmm. was a guy who is always at the courthouse, and I believe it's because he works there as an attorney. Um, and so that was me looking at, well, I don't really care so much about what this guy thinks. He can't stand me from all that I can tell, so I don't owe him anything. If anything, I want to help my community better know who the aggressors are and the, the people who are willing to threaten. That man's not an aggressor. And, and I still take issue with it. Because of the fact that um, greater but isn't good, that a greater good I don't think comparison? you're part of the. I don't think you're part of the greater, and that's just it. I'm saying that you should always do things for selfish reasons, and you should never say that you're doing it for the greater good. Because normally, you're not part of the greater. When you're talking about the greater good, you're almost never part of the greater. And I'm saying that with doing this, you are shedding. You are you're promoting a bad light on your name. Because I, I I think personally that it's petty. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want you to be seen as a petty person. And I don't think you want to be seen that way. Well, and people you, are going to see me however they want. Exactly. But that's the thing <laughs> is we should do things to promote ourselves. And when you do this, you're not thinking about how people will see you. You're just doing it so that other people get benefit from it. And that's not right. Well, the benefit that's, to me, okay, so there, value the, the selfish you. motive was that I wanted to identify this person. So therefore, in order to get uh, more, in order to uh, more successfully, hopefully it hasn't happened yet, but to identify him, I want to get more pairs of eyeballs on this person's face so they might be able to know who he is. So that was the selfish motivation, but ultimately it also benefits the activist, even though if it doesn't benefit this guy. And I see that what you're saying is that it's petty from my viewpoint, but as far as the greater good is concerned here, the... You know, the activists outnumber this character. I have no obligation to this man. So, therefore, I mean, from that perspective, I understand where the greater good concept comes into to, uh, to real concern, I think, is when it's used as a justification to, vi to use violence. When uh, people who want to control the state use that language, then it becomes very, very, da very, very dangerous at that point. Because mm -hmm. then it's, well, it's for the greater good that we need to steal from you, that we need to force you to do things. And it's then it becomes very, right. Because then the question is, well, who decides what the greater good is? So the bureaucrats, are they the right. ones who decide? The politicians? Um, so in this case, I decided it for my own purposes, and no one, you know, gets it's hurt because of that. Well, one of the points I want to make is that I like to try and remove the words greater good out of the vocabulary of the American people. Because That's a fair we shouldn't, point. We shouldn't be using newspeak words that they're forcing on us. We're, it, we're not living in 1984, and we need to stop letting the government force fair, us into a Fair point. I'll concede that one. Absolutely. You right. know, I could, have, I could have chosen a better term. Well, the other thing is, though, is that, um, is that what, what was in it for you? But, I mean, you got to ask what's in it for me, and if what's in it for you is is petty and not helpful to the the greater goal of your life, then it's not worth you doing. Well, it depends on how, on your perspective. I mean, y'all think it's petty, but what was in it for me was, like I said, I wanted to identify the guy. I, it made for an interesting blog post. It made for an interesting conversation here on Free Talk Live tonight. Let's go to Daryl in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead with your thoughts. So I feel like I have to disagree with something that Lauren said earlier in the night. You better hurry. Uh, Lauren, you got 30 I, seconds. I, I believe you said that uh, Ian should not have said anything about the guy that told Ian, like, don't talk to me because that was that guy's free speech. Well, mm -hmm. the way free speech works is that guy could say whatever he wants, and then Ian can say what he thinks about what the guy said. Which includes posting a so, blog post uh, for the world to see. Daryl, we're out of time for tonight, but uh, we know we'll be hearing from you tomorrow night because I'm going to be gone on a trip, and you are taking over the reins of the show. I think you're going to have Brian have Stephanie in, and he hung up. Uh, so you'll hear more from Daryl tomorrow and uh, and Mark, and uh, you're going to have Brett on this weekend as well with you on Saturday. Yeah. All right, so we'll see you tomorrow, and uh, I'll see you whenever I get back, which will be probably Monday. Later. FreeTalkLive.com Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPRadio.com. 
the monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc, and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, April 3rd, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.83 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,283 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $437. Ballot Access News reports on April 2nd, the U.S. Supreme Court issued their opinion in McCutcheon v. Federal Elections Commission. The vote was 5-4 to four and struck down a federal law passed in 1976 that restricts how much money a donor may contribute in total to all candidates or committees. The decision does not affect the contribution limit from an individual to a particular candidate, which is $2,600 in the primary season and another $2,600 during the general election. The majority decision notes that among the 38 states that have contribution limits, only eight have aggregate limits. Justice Clarence Thomas wrote separately to say that he believes all contribution limits should be struck down. The majority opinion by Chief Justice John Roberts is 40 pages long. The dissenting opinion by Justice Stephen Breyer is 30 pages and also has an appendix of 13 pages with statistical data meant to show that the decision will make it easier for wealthy individuals to channel additional contributions to particular candidates. SCOTUS blog adds, the ruling emphasized that donors will get into legal trouble only if they demand a specific favor in policy or legislation in a direct exchange for the money they give. When you purchase gold or silver from Amagi Metals using my affiliate link, gold.fppradio.com, you help fund FPP Radio News. That's gold.fppradio.com. AFP reports, Ukraine's parliament on Tuesday approved a series of joint military exercises with NATO countries that would put U.S. troops in direct proximity to Russian forces. The decision came as NATO foreign ministers gathered in Brussels for a two-day meeting dominated by concerns over the reports of a recent buildup of Russian forces near Crimea that U.S. officials estimate had at one point reached 40,000 troops. NATO has sought to reinforce its eastern frontier after Russia's annexation of Crimea and amid concerns about Kremlin's emboldened foreign policy. The exercises approved Tuesday would see Ukraine conduct two sets of military exercises with the United States this summer that have prompted disquiet in Russia in previous years. Ukraine is planning two additional maneuvers with NATO member Poland as well as joint ground operations with Moldova and Romania. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot F-P-P-Radio.com. 
Reason.com reports many brewers have developed a relationship with farmers who feed spent grains to cows and other livestock. It's a win-win. Farmers get cost-effective feed while brewers cut down on environmental waste and possibly make some extra cash, or at least save cash by not having to dispose of the spent grain. Under new rules proposed by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, breweries would be required to dry and package spent grain before it could be given or sold to farmers to use as feed. Both brewers and farmers are upset by this proposal, which they say would pose a big financial burden and also just generally makes no sense. According to craftbeer.com, spent grain accounts for as much as 85% of a brewery's total byproduct. But processing the spent grain would require additional equipment investments and additional labor. If the FDA has its way, brewers are likely to back out of their once symbiotic relationship with farmers or at least stop giving away spent grain for free, thereby raising farmers' operational cost. Or they'll see their own cost go up, whether they choose to process the feed for farmers the FDA's way or simply dispose of it, which still costs more than giving it away for free to livestock farmers. Either way, nobody wins under this new proposal. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Well, today was an historic occasion in Pennington. That's right, Diane. The entire town turned out to honor Paul Webster, the area's one gay man with Pennington's first ever gay pride parade. Paul, a 33-year-old hardware store owner, was too shy to ask for a parade, but that didn't stop almost 2,000 residents from showing their support for his homosexuality. Mayor Sue Hallinan organized the parade and even chipped in some of her own money to pay for decorations. Well, I was channel surfing one day and I came across a program about the gay pride. Next time I I went to the hardware store. I said, Paul, we're going to throw you a parade. And he just said, oh, please don't do that. I don't want that. I beg you. He just didn't want us to go to the trouble. Uh, he doesn't want to ride on the penis float. Uh, he gets motion sickness. So uh, we're going to have him hold the reins instead. And Penningtonians have already decided on a fairy tale theme for next year's parade. Oh, that'll be great. And if Paul has a boyfriend, they can both be dressed up as kings. Terrific idea. This is the Onion News Network. It's time for Off the Air Live. And here's your host, Cody O'Connor. I tell you, these mass shootings are starting to get hack, man. Really? Fort Hood again? I, either I'm getting deja vu or you guys need to come up with more interesting places to shoot people at. Because isn't it getting a little bit boring? Really the same place again? Yikes. Did you hear about this breaking news? Another shooting at Fort Hood. I'm uh, I'm just about done with what. Well, like, why would you watch the news? It's it's the same thing over and over again. I know that like this it is a thing that happened. But like do we do we need I mean do we need is it going to be like an 3 weeks of well what do we do about this? What do we do about the guns? Cuz I don't think my heart can take it. I don't think it can. Every time there's a mass shooting and there's been way too many since this Obama came into the presidency. There's been way too many of them, and every time it's the deja vu effect, the media goes straight into gun control specials, and everybody's complaining about magazine sizes. Well, Jesus Christ, if if a gun has 17 bullets, then that's a few bullets too many. We need restrictions. We need need a more thorough process for people to get these weapons. Yeah, bah, 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 yeah. and it's like, dude, I, I'm going to go out and get my background check so I can buy a gun and stick it in my mouth pretty soon. Like, that's the thing that's going through my head after this. The first thing I thought this morning when I heard about the news, I was like, oh, I bet I know what the motive was. 
the killer was so upset that the news media was talking about a missing fucking plane for upwards of 25 days that he goes, screw it, man. Fine. If they're not going to come out with a new headline, I'm going to make one. And then he took a whole uh, soup of Ambien that he just dumped all of his Ambien into a soup with his uh, special K cereal. He ate it. He grabbed his gun and he went off to do some kind of terrible deed. The headline goes, Ivan Lopez, the shooter who carried out a mass shooting at Fort Hood in Texas, had not been in combat during his tour of Iraq, but was being assessed for post-traumatic stress disorder. I don't want to sound too much like a dick, but was it really a mass shooting? I mean, you only got three. And I don't, I like, <laughs> I'm sorry I'm taking this so juvially, but I mean, how many, I don't know what they expect from us anymore. I'm mean, like, I I am emotionally dead inside. Congratulations, the media. I am no longer phased by human suffering and death. It, do, it does nothing for me anymore. I remember whenever, whenever the Newtown thing happened or... Yeah, the, the Sandy Hook is Newtown, right? I get them mixed up because there's way too many of them. When that one happened, you know, I was sitting around the pizzeria and I heard the news. So it's someone, I think, I think Melinda's mom called her up on the cell phone and it was like, you need to check up on CNN. Something crazy happened. There's been a school shooting. And, and, and then I was like, oh my God, oh my God, how many people? What happened? How could that? Oh, Wow. How could somebody be so terrible? And then it's like, okay, 18 shootings later. Can I really have that same reaction? 